If you've been paying attention to upcoming video game releases, you know Prime, the Luke, 2003 Sam, cartoon game Prayer, is receiving the full C-Mats, remake from the ground up treatment. Tofu. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is slated to release this year on all current <coughs> generation platforms and PC. You might be asking yourself, why? Ladies and gentlemen, slaps. I'm SM Loader, here to guide you through the full story of how speedrunning Battle for Bikini Bottom evolved from a humble passion into a movement that revived the forgotten cult classic. Our story of ingenuity, resilience, camaraderie, and personal growth will be covered in four parts. So without further ado, Wait, I didn't even, know, I didn't even know there was a part three and four. Beginning. Holy shit. <clears throat> The SpongeBob SquarePants property has collectively sold over 20 million video game copies, Toss with me on estimated Twitter and to be tied with links. the likes of the Spyro, Castlevania, Mass Effect, and SimCity franchises. Despite the SpongeBob video game franchise's eventual success, its beginnings, in prime, especially in the realm of 3D games, were undeniably shaky. In 2002, SpongeBob SquarePants' Revenge of the Flying Dutchman was released ass. for the PlayStation 2 one. and GameCube, making it the first entry in SpongeBob's 3D lineup. And this game was not initially received as a treasure. Cause shit's what ass. Is that? What the f is that? That's it. What a rip. <laughs> SpongeBob betrayed us. Oh, it's from the last episode. Or burn. I remember that. Burn. Burn, I say. Burn. <clears throat> ah, fuck, this I forgot game all about that. should not be played. Even true SpongeBob fans should steer clear of this overrated game. Like me, I still is love SpongeBob as a whole, but this piece of trash is inexcusable and embarrassing to the SpongeBob name. Quote taken from user Celebiz, GameFAQs reviews. It was looking like the SpongeBob franchise would fall victim to the same fate that other cartoon video games had Ed suffered, Ed game. being yeah. rushed cash grabs designed Fairly only to capitalize parents. on children's attachments to the cartoons they were based on. That is, until the small development company Heavy Iron Studios got on the case in 2003. Up until this point, Heavy Iron's biggest success was Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights also in 2002. Shit. I didn't like that it one. was a good start, but their next title would become their biggest success, and with time, the most impactful licensed game of the early 2000s. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini yeah, Bottom, we're cooking. a 3D platformer and adventure oh. game with a simple plot. Plankton creates an army of robots to procure the Krabby Patty secret formula, and they run amok. You, as Spongebob, and his best friends Patrick and Sandy, must foil Plankton's scheme. Golden spatulas are collected and used to unlock new areas inspired by episodes from the cartoon. The game, despite receiving mixed reviews upon release, became a huge success. Pretty good though, all things video considered. Game franchise ablaze. The game sold 3.2 like million copies worldwide across all consoles, with the PlayStation 2 version contributing more than half of those sales at 1.7 million. So if you grew up with a GameCube or Xbox, this might be why you haven't heard of Battle for Bikini Bottom. But if backpack. you grew up with a PlayStation 2, this game was essential. And still, the game was re-released as a platinum or greatest hit on all three of its original consoles. It I had it for the GameCube. short backward compatibility list on the Xbox 360. But if the game was so popular back in the good old days, why did the passage of time treat it so harshly? After the theatrical release of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, such the a good movie too. The show, including its it. creator Steven Hillenburg, fucking David Hasselhoff's with a new tits. team, which would steer the franchise into a direction targeted for younger children as opposed to general audiences. For those growing up in the early 2000s, the show was aiming younger while they were growing older. Maybe SpongeBob games weren't so appealing to them anymore. So with that, Battle for Bikini Bottom was left behind. And with the show's decline in reputation among older audiences, so too came a decline in optimism in towards peace. the game's acclaim. Later into the 2000s, a popular YouTube format called Let's Playing emerged. Boo! Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> but during this time, Battle for Bikini Bottom was mostly forgotten or not really given a chance by those who rediscovered it. Why did people want us to play this? I don't know, dude. This I, is not interesting. I don't think we've actually gotten to the game oh, yet. That's Maybe they up. assumed the worst from an early 2000s game based on a show now entirely targeted at young children. The game seemingly lost its reputation, and those who could uphold it were nowhere to be found. The game's fans, 
Where were they? Well, the fandom still existed, but it was scattered, ununified. Unlike those of other popular games like from the era, Emeralds. no serious efforts to keep the game alive and interesting gained any traction. It seemed Battle for Bikini Bottom had missed the golden opportunity of riding the internet's rapid growth during the early 2000s. God, this is so nostalgic. I... Not... I don't know how many people will remember, but Siglimic made Twitch. Twitch is forever indebted to Siglimic. The only time Twitch ever really started to pop off was when Siglimic was doing Mario runs. Oh my god, it was so good. Oh, those days. I remember spending like most of a summer watching Siglimic's, Siglimic's run on, runs on Twitch. That was like the only time people would ever talk about the site. Because Justin TV had just fizzled out. And then it was all on Siglimic's shoulders to carry an entire live streaming site by his fucking self. So good. Those runs were legendary. But under the surface, something was building. Slowly at first, but in due time, it would gain traction. After all, the goal was to go fast. Speedrunning. In its purest form, completing a video loves, game as quickly Ray. as possible. Before the days of mainstream retro capture and video uploading, speedrunners posted their records on an online forum called Speed Demos Archive. Kind At of a trash time, site, video to be honest, I never liked full it. Runs were uncommon, especially for less popular games. Speedruns Most games didn't even have an established community to play one. them. Naturally, some users were desperate for others to beat their own childhood favorites as quickly Thanks for your as possible. Karma. In 2006, a user named Groudon199 posted a thread titled SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, asking, Would someone like to try this speedrun? It would be getting 75 golden spatulas, then beating the final boss. Maybe someone could do a 100% run if it isn't too long. Mm, the game's kind of long, so multi-segmented runs will do. <laughs> These cries for attention were usually met with contempt from more established members of the speedrunning community. Hey! You! Requesting runs around here rarely gets anywhere. Since you seem to have enough interest in a run to post a topic, why not you? True! So, Get fucked! He didn't. For four years, Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunning, despite its <clears throat> uh, robust beginnings, went completely dark. Until July 29th, 2010, when user KT1JDDD created another thread on SDA, discussing his plans to speedrun Battle for Bikini Bottom, hoping to get under three hours on his first Thanks, attempt. Dimitri. And his plans were just as complex as his username. From this point onward, let's just refer to him as KT. And KT would become the first to complete a Battle for Is Bikini Bottom sleepy? any percent speedrun. For those not familiar with speedrunning, an any percent speedrun requires the player to beat the game from start to finish as quickly as possible, with no What's next on your speedrun agenda? I'm not cheating, sure yet, man. I still want to do the Hobbit. Battle for Bikini Bottom is an open world game, so speedrun. figuring out the path from start to finish can be tricky. Let's discuss how the game actually plays to figure this out. The game features three main types of collectibles. The fabulous golden spatula, mm -hmm. the illustrious shiny object, and the smelly sock. Golden spatulas are the main mode of progression throughout the game, unlocking new areas and challenges as they are collected. Think of them like Super Mario 64's stars, except you need 75 to beat the game instead of just 70. Shiny objects are the currency of Battle for Bikini Bottom. They are paid throughout levels to access new areas or to Mr. Krabs for some more spatulas. Socks are hidden around levels similarly to spatulas and their sole purpose is to be traded with Patrick for more spatulas. Think of these like Super Mario Sunshine's blue coins. Once the player has collected 15 golden spatulas from the start of the game, they may challenge the first major boss, Robo Sandy, after which SpongeBob is awarded with the Bubble Bowl power-up. Defeating Robo Sandy also unlocks the second area of the hub world where your Bubble Bowl skills will be tested in three new worlds. I played this part on French. Collect 40 spatulas throughout the first two Recently, hub areas the to challenge the second boss fight. Robo Patrick, which is also fun SpongeBob to put it in Japanese, so it Bubble feels like an anime, as well as access to the third hub area. Finally, use both of your unlocked abilities in all nine of the worlds to reach the 75 golden spatulas required to unlock the final boss fight inside the Chum Bucket Lab and finish the game. As previously mentioned, this game is open world, so between leaving SpongeBob's pineapple and entering the Chum Bucket it Lab, has so many any cool spatula throughout too. the game can be used to it's meet the requirement of 75. 
So KT, in his endeavor to complete the first battle for Bikini Bottom Thanks speed run, was faced with the challenge the of figuring King. out which combinations of spatulas, socks, and shiny objects were the fastest for reaching the end of the game and defeating Robo SpongeBob. You might be thinking that this was a huge task for one person to figure out alone, especially with no backbone of speedrun knowledge to rely on. Yeah, this guy's I'm got a sure. galaxy brain. <laughs> yes, it was. Despite the game's open world design, most of the levels are blocked by barricades, out of bounds detection, and gates that require golden spatulas to enter. Only one could be accessed at the start of the run, Jellyfish Fields. But KT had a plan, or rather, a speedrun route. In the context of Battle nope. for Bikini Bottom, this refers to the order in which the runner collects objectives with intent to reach the final goal. Unfortunately, KT's exact route was never posted and no footage exists for his run. However, well, we he do just know, lied. based on his post, which spatulas, how many socks, and how many shiny objects he collected been theory to crafting. the run in under three hours. Only the order of segments and exact socks collected are up to speculation. What's up everyone, it's Shift here with a shovel and pick. Today we're going to excavate a deep history of BFBB and speculate what the first speedrun of this game might have looked like based on this fossil of a thread. After examining I feel like this guy's just a liar. and researching which strategies were known at the time, I got 50 here's my socks take on how one. KT beat the game in under three hours. KT started by collecting 50 shiny objects in Spongebob's pineapple to enter the closet and collect the first golden spatula. After leaving, he collected two more spatulas in Bikini Bottom and entered Jellyfish Fields. He made sure to collect socks and combo tikis for shiny object bonuses along the way. KT made clear in his post that plenty of combos are required to have enough shiny objects for passing the bridge in Jellyfish Fields and paying for the other expensive clams along the way. Throughout Jellyfish Fields, he collected eight spatulas and... Well, he didn't specify which socks he collected due to some laziness and secrecy. Jeez, liar. He's a fucking liar. Okay. But we do know that throughout the game, <laughs> he's a goddamn board, liar. And since Jellyfish Fields has 14 socks, he got away with the it. World, it's likely that many of them were collected in there. Leaving downtown, KT would have collected a total of 16 golden spatulas and a bunch of socks. KT specified that new research, I mean, I got smarter, has allowed me to get the bubble bowl before Goo Lagoon which will help me get more shiny oh, objects. Jesus Christ. Well, after my own research, I think I've cracked the code on KT's super secret strats. Because KT already had 16 spatulas and only 15 are required to challenge the first boss, he did this first and then entered Goolagoon afterward. While collecting all eight golden spatulas in Goolagoon, he used the sandcastle tikis to grind for shiny objects necessary for the rest of the run. Destroying the hammer bot on the way up, igniting the large stack, and bowling a thunder tiki off the bridge would maximize the payout, right before jumping into the moat and drowning to reset the tikis and go again. The extra tikis on the bridge must be galaxy KT brain. waited Not until bad. after getting the bubble bowl to enter Goolagoon. After finishing Goo Lagoon, KT took care of the second hub area spatulas, collecting all from Rock Bottom, Sand Mountain, and the Mermelair. Except for the one from the Rolling Ballroom Challenge. That damn Rolling Ballroom. Yeah, shit sucks. I hated that in the Rehydrated finish, too. the second boss to unlock the second power-up, the Cruise Bubble. Now Please we enter the Jake. third and final chapter, containing the Kelp Forest, Spongebob's Dream, and the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. KT claims to have collected three spatulas from the Kelp Forest, which likely included the one from the first zone, then the two from the Swamp. KT most likely figured out that stacking two tikis next to this cliff can actually skip the entire tiki roundup puzzle. And after doing so, KT went down in the swamps as Patrick to collect the spatula in the cage. KT's dream segment excluded one spatula from Sandy's dream. Rather than collecting the spatula at the end of the long slide segment, he collected the one awarded for fighting the robots at the Alamo. Though it was pretty expensive, fighting the robots and getting some of those juicy combos he talked about earlier would have helped make up some of those shiny objects. KT also decided to exclude the spatula in Squidward's dream. With all that crazy platforming, he had to go with something. That better. platforming and was kind of crazy. His graveyard. Well, it looks like he mm. didn't even enter the graveyard in his run. Perhaps the clams are just too expensive? Or maybe those wall jumps were just too crazy. Or maybe he was just... too lazy. I... I don't know. He's but a fraud. He's a fraud. 75 spatulas without the graveyard. KT's brain was so big that derp. he didn't even need the graveyard to beat the game in under three hours. Truly remarkable. Ooh, I should give cool KT biking. more credit for his gaming skills, however. After collecting 75 spatulas, he still had to go through the gauntlet of Robo Spongebob Part 2, with no checkpoints or means to restore health. The player must complete a series of challenges consecutively to neutralize the giant robot's brain and finish the game. The speedrun officially ends when all three of the fuses inside the robot's brain are destroyed. KT's route may have been rough around the edges to say the least, but the development of a speedrun has to start somewhere mm -hmm. in order to begin the process of unlocking the game's full potential.
But how much potential even if it starts from a lie, that's still good. actually have. Despite its Prime undeniably Reveal. tight controls, it seemed like the level progression at this point was pretty linear, having little freedom to choose world order due to spatula requirements, grinding currency to purchase expensive tolls everywhere, being forced to complete extremely long, tedious puzzles. Was it all worth it? And with such little attention given to the forgotten Thanks, title, would its potential ever polite. be realized? Well, some beacons of hope would soon arrive. Over one year after the creation of KT's thread on August 18th, 2011, a user named Yoshi Master replied saying that he got a run that was around 2 hours and 30 minutes long oh. using a new groundbreaking glitch. He posted a video containing what, wait, a new this glitch was found Field's back taxi then? Pad, which resulted in an odd glitch that appeared to allow SpongeBob to go out of bounds without being stopped. Holy shit. This glitch, which later became known as hand disabling, is performed by leaving a zone with the hand on screen. Hand disabling prevents SpongeBob from voiding out while falling into any designated out of bounds area. Only a few days Is later, Yoshi Master posted a new video coast? titled Quick Spatulas Via Out of Bounds Glitch. By disabling the hand, Yoshi Master could jump into the out of bounds areas at the start of Jellyfish Fields to collect a golden spatula awarded for completing a challenge accessible later, that being Kawabungie. The game would usually prevent the player from jumping into this ditch to collect the spatula before accessing the challenge, but with Yoshi Master's new glitch, he Damn, could collect the spatula Damn, this guy really fucking busted stopped. it wide open but early. the big time save from this has yet to be discussed. Surprisingly, many casual players never Ranger. figured out that you can pause the game and select any the of the bits. tasks you've received in the menu John? to instantly warp between them. Typically, the pause menu task warps are unlocked after accepting the tasks from various characters, presumably so you can come back to do them later. For the speedrun, however, Yoshi Master found a way to warp to these tasks before accepting them. By collecting a spatula before its task is accepted, the task warp location is unlocked without talking to anyone. For instance, Gary in Jellyfish Fields, who tells you there's a spatula under the bungee hook. After collecting the cow bungee spatula from out of bounds, Yoshi Man, Master can use the warp menu exploit so he didn't have to go through any of the gameplay between the starting area of Jellyfish Fields and Gary's dialogue, which would normally be where he would unlock the task. This huge skip also cut out the need for 125 shiny objects to complete the bridge at the beginning of the level. Already, KT's original route was being improved upon significantly. But Yoshi Master's yeah, been next one would really throw a wrench into what KT thought was the fastest way to complete the game. Yoshi Master would prove that using the graveyard was not only worthwhile, but also very fast. His next major skip found through abusing menu warps and hand disabling was in the <coughs> second zone of the graveyard, where he walked out of bounds to collect the spatula in the shipwreck bungee ditch, similar to Here's how he haze. did for Kawabungie in Jellyfish Fields. Yoshi Master could not only warp to shipwreck bungee after this, effectively skipping the majority of the zone, but could also avoid paying 2,700 shiny objects for the clam intended to drop the bungee hook for collecting the spatula. The implications were huge. Meanwhile, KT had claimed another world record of 2 hours and 37 minutes on October 24th, 2011, still with no video available. On October 23rd of 2011, Why are they accepting KT that then? claimed he'd achieved a sub-230 without using Yoshi Master's new discoveries and knew that with implementation, they would make his run hell of fast. But something wasn't quite adding up. When he finally found means of capturing his PlayStation 2's gameplay, KT claimed he recorded a full run and was... Um... Editing out the loading screen. Oh my to god! Avoid this guy's a fraud! Valuable time. Apparently, KT edited out so many loading screens, he saved an entire day. While KT went back to the future, a second community was developing their own strategies on a taskvideos.org forum, similarly structured to SDA, but hey, for tools to speedrunning. On April 4th, 2011, user JLun2 described a skip for Phase 1 of Robo Spongebob, which caused the first phase to end for absolutely no reason when Spongebob Maybe is launched Skyler. high enough. It was later realized through use of action replay moon jump codes that the developers had left a cutscene trigger far above the fight's spawn point oh. and colliding with it caused the phase to immediately end. This was likely added as a debug tool during development, and the test videos community had uncovered it through the use of external tools. This kind of resourcefulness would help speed up the optimization process when combined with the efforts of the SDA Thank community. You, Throughout 2011, user CoolKirby relayed information found on the SDA thread to the users on the task videos thread, 
updating them on developing strategies such as Yoshi Master's hand disable. They discuss possible uses, including some major skips on the Kelp Vine slide, agreeably the toughest time trial in the game. With users aware of both threads, a collision course was imminent. But it would take the emergence of two great minds to crack the game wide open T -Pain. and unify an effort to progress the speedrun. NKT. On February 22nd, 2012, a user named Rody B. Tomo from You're the United flux? States Thank posted you, a groundbreaking You're application so of the hand disable glitch on the Battle for Bikini Bottom SDA thread. This user would later become known as Cole625. Cole's new trick utilized Yoshi Master's Kawabungee skip, warping back to Bikini Bottom after collecting the spatula and causing the Saving Game logo to stay on screen. With this state active, Cole could walk onto Out of Bounds Skill Sand oh, without man. deactivating the hand glitch found by Yoshi Master. With the Saving Game logo on screen, the hand won't be summoned as it cannot interrupt the game being saved. With this strategy, Cole could walk far out of bounds, around the invisible barriers bordering the main hub world, and reach the second area of the hub previously only unlockable by defeating the first boss. Cole had successfully broken the sequence of in-game events by gaining access to later levels before completing the earlier ones. This is what we'll refer to as a sequence break. A sequence break differs from a skip in that it deviates from the intended so, order of the So, just looking at this, why couldn't he use this glitch and take a more direct path? I'm sure they'll explain. Because he had to go all the way around over this mountain in order to reach this. I don't see why he couldn't take a more direct path, like maybe go from here. Maybe these are too high to climb, but it doesn't look like it here, so maybe I'm just wrong. I feel like there just may have been a faster path. Invisible walls? But uh, he said that he was able to get around the invisible walls. So I assume that meant they like deloaded. I'm like I said, I'm sure he's going to explain it. It just feels like this is a long path to get there. Objectives without removing the objectives from the sequence entirely. A skip simply cuts out gameplay in a way to where that gameplay is no longer required. So despite Lunara. Cole's groundbreaking discovery, he had not simply skipped a third of the game. He had only discovered how to access more levels at an earlier time. The next day, oh, he went Cole around posted them, a video not explaining them. how to gotcha. sequence break from the I second hub area to the third hub area without defeating Robo Patrick. By spacing two jumps and a spin to stall air momentum from the police station, Cole jumped over the barrier guarding the third hub area and effectively gained access to all nine levels without fighting the first two major bosses. Oh. However, there still were some limitations to these discoveries. So, as we mentioned before, Battle for Bikini Bottom has three explorable worlds accessible in each of the three hub areas, totaling nine. John. The limitation of Cole's discovery comes from spatula unlock requirements. There's only one world in each of the three hub areas that is free from a spatula requirement to enter. In the first area, this is Jellyfish Fields, in the second, the Mermelayer, and in the third, Spongebob's Who Dream. Who wants their dick so despite having access to all Bro, nine just of tell the worlds, Cole could she only be enter three tonight. of them with his current spatula count. To watch but that's not all. Without having defeated the bosses to unlock the Bubble Bull or Cruise Bubble, Cole was powerless. The Mermelayer was not viable to Those play golden early due to don't a fuck huge around. gap preventing the player from entering its main chamber, only accessible by bowling a paddle wheel with the Bubble Bull. And as for reaching the third hub world, the Bubble Bull was also required to unlock a trampoline for bouncing on top of the police station. Without being able to reach the top of the police station, Cole could not jump over the barrier to the third hub world. This was extremely unfortunate, for if Cole were able to reach Spongebob's dream, there are spatulas in that level he could obtain early, with neither the Bubble Bull nor the Crucible. So bubble. close, then. The challenge was now figuring wet out dream. how to get on top of the police station without the Bubble Bull. It seemed progress had halted. That is, until two months later. On May 24, 2012, Rocky. Cole posted several videos containing new strategies, which actually included the Robo Sponge Skip found by Jalen 2 and also the long-awaited police station climb. That's right, Cole figured out how to reach the top of the police station by bouncing between the hub barriers What a cool way of doing it! Repeatedly. This discovery truly established Cole as an abstract thinker and a problem solver. His progress further attracted the attention of the task videos community surrounding the game, which had been focusing on skipping the 75 spatula lock on the Chum Bucket Lab. It seemed all this time while Cole was working on sequence breaking and reorganizing spatulas, the task community was trying to straight up skip the entire game. Yeah. But as 2012 carried on, it became clear- Fun fact about that, when Rehydrated came out, there was a way of basically skipping the whole game. Uh, how did it work again? You could basically be Rehydrated and I think it was two minutes, let me see what the, the record was. Don't know if you still can. And I think this video predates the rehydrated release, so it probably won't be addressed here, but I think it was like two minutes and you could beat the whole game. 
it takes you right to the end. Let's see. Whoops, I went to the wrong category. Uh, one minute and 11 seconds was the record here. But yeah, you could skip the entire game and rehydrate it. It's not fun, which is why I didn't run it. It's just a menu glitch, if I remember correctly. But you see, like it's not a really fun speed run. I love super short ones, but only when they have cool tech. Menu glitches are just never fun as a speed run. Miss speed run streams? It's not like they've been away for that long. We were just speed running, um. What the fuck's it called? Fuck, I don't remember. It hasn't been that long. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah. Only in Rehydrated can you do that. It's not in the original game. Also, before I forget, because someone recommended... I look at this. Let me see it real quick. There's a Nosferatu... Speed run that he wants me to try, because it's 41 seconds. Let me see if that has any cool tech. Where is it? Oh, this is 32 minutes. Where's the 41 seconds? Okay, let me just go back to speedrun.com. Here it is. If it's menu glitches, I won't do it. Holy fuck, it's been a minute since I've seen this game. Yeah, I never played it, but I always saw it. This does look kind of wacky. He's just throwing sand on him? What is that? As the evil Malachi falls defeated, you... Okay, I'll learn the speedrun. You're right, that does look kind of fun. That, that did look kind of fun. Here, that Cole's approach was far more practical. As the year came to a close, Labdor Skip had never been found. At this point, Joker. Cole's progress and KT's time heist encouraged some members of the Task Videos thread to migrate to the SDA thread. It's personal, along with the help of her friend Pitor Flaxandrosis, would enter the SDA what thread a name. with an already completed any percent run of 215.07. At this time, it was the fastest run claimed to have been performed. Easy resub IRS. They routed the run together and recorded it in a single segment, becoming the first official world record for the game. It's personal and Pitor Flaxandrosis would later become known as Hazel and Nathan, respectively. These Canadian speedrunners had been routing and hunting for strategies together in person and believed their route could go as low as two hours and seven minutes. This run had also been performed on the GameCube version of the game rather than the PlayStation 2 version. Though not intentionally chosen, the GameCube version saved quite a bit of time over the PlayStation 2 due to faster loading times between zones. This became the first version change in the speedrun's development. On New Year's Eve in 2012, Hazel and Nathan discovered a route that would save multiple minutes by sequence breaking the kelp forest and completing it in reverse order. This can be done by climbing out of bounds at the start of the first zone and walking along the level barrier to reach the God, the, the glitches are so good zone. in Battle for Bikini Bottom. This spawns the player at the end of the final zone where a golden spatula can be collected and a teleport box can be found He's close by. Phantom. Let's take a minute to explain why this was Hayden, such a big deal. That, but thank you, Teleport boxes can be found throughout most zones in BFBB, which allow the player to jump between them if both are opened. But as an accessibility feature, some levels allow the player to open the box near their beginning automatically by only opening the one at the end. 
This allows the player to warp back to the beginning of a level even if they forgot to open the box at the start, making backtracking much less frustrating. Mm -hmm. But the developers of course did not foresee Hazel and Nathan's new Kelp Forest Backward trick, which allowed them to abuse this accessibility mechanic to jump from the end of the level to the beginning of the level, effectively skipping the entire Kelp Vine slide. Abusing teleport boxes and the placement of Mermaid Man's time challenge trigger could be used to instantly win what many considered the hardest time challenge in the game as well. Fucking After galaxy brain, Jesus Christ. Vines, Hazel and Nathan could then enter the kelp caves through Basically, exit, West collecting the golden spatula at the end of the level and utilizing Yoshi Master's warp abuse strat to select the kelp caves without having unlocked the task. This placed them at the beginning of the kelp caves where they could again enter the next level through its exit. Now they were in the kelp swamps, placed right in front of the spatula awarded for the Tiki Roundup puzzle. Hold on, give me one second, I'm so fucking thirsty. Let me fill up my water real quick, I haven't had water in a minute. I'll be right back, sorry for the blue balls. I'll speed run. Uh, time me, 80% root for water. <gasps> I'm back, sorry. I'm saying goodnight to Tiana as well. Thanks, you resub, Aubriana, Dread, Nun, Virgo, Vape Lord, 3, in the Prime, Hot. And the resub, Grippy. This was not only a huge improvement over KT's presumed Tiki stacking strategy, but also allowed collecting Cyril. six spatulas in the Kelp Forest at lightning speed, and rather than only run. three at a much slower pace. With Cole, Hazel, and Nathan all taking the sequence break approach, Battle for Bikini Bottom's any percent run would start to optimize rapidly. Yeah, sub two hours right around the day, corner. Hazel posted the new Kelp Forest route on the SDA thread. Cole was inactive on the thread since the police station discovery, but had been posting plenty of new finds on his YouTube channel since then. Combining her knowledge with Cole's, Hazel achieved her first world record in Battle for Bikini Bottom 80%, 1 hour 51 minutes and 45 seconds. Though this run's video no longer exists, we do know which new strategies were included. What happened, DMCA? Cole's major skips for the first zone of Jellyfish Fields and reaching the Rock Bottom Museum without finding Sandy allowed Hazel to skip many convoluted tutorials and puzzles. Precise jump spacing allows the player to reach the villain containment system to fight Prawn without Brooke. shutting down the security system, but despite skipping to the end of the Mermelayer with this trick, Hazel still needed to collect the other golden spatulas throughout this world. This is where Cole's security tunnel skip would save another chunk of time. By scaling solid objects around the security tunnel, the player can skip the first section of the blinking tile tunnels. Then, damage boosting off the floating turrets on level 2 can actually be used to boost onto level 3. Mm. Cole also that would have helped me a lot and rehydrated when I got caves, stuck there. Along with another tight jump that would save lots of time climbing up to Spork Mountain later. His downtown route was also quite Yeah, I'll watch the new Chainsaw Massacre movie. The level was truly a playground for big sequence breaks and wacky strats. A new trick called Spongeball Storage potentially had use here, which allows the player to pick up and store a Spongeball with a variety of states. The player can then transform whenever they please to release any of the desired effects. The strategy would eventually no, see there's no way I'd be able to speedrun this. This is way too technical. Store trampoline bounce for collecting the Spongebob spatula previously only accessible while playing as Sandy. A few days after Hazel posted I'm her really official world record remote. showcasing these strategies, Wish Cole returned to the, the SDA thread posting a new skip for collecting the tower bungee spatula without paying for it. By climbing the flags linking the tent to this tower, Cole climbed to the top and landed a precise jump sequence to grab the wooden planks at the top of the tower. This Do saved 2200 shiny objects because he no longer had to pay the clam to drop the trampoline intended for reaching the top of the tower. With this skip along with the new stalagmite platforming route used to clear the sea caves, Goo Lagoon was coming along quite nicely. At this point, the routes for Jellyfish Fields, Downtown, and Goo Lagoon were fast enough to obtain the 15 spatulas required to challenge Robo Sandy without using Cole's hub area sequence breaks. Completing the first three worlds immediately was now far more effective, as it didn't waste over a minute walking out of bounds. And with strategies for later worlds already in place, the game That's a shame that never got to be like uh, legitimately implemented. Before. With a solidified route it's for such a cool Bikini idea. Bottom 80%, the group began organizing speedrun races on really speedrunslive.com, otherwise known as SRL. SRL is a site designed to host speedrun races and rank players based on their wins and losses. The first Chris. race took place on January 4, 2013, during which Cole set a new world record of 149.51. Nine days later, Hazel completed a race in 145.29, another new world record. And four days after that, Cole took the world record back again with a 142.52, beating bad. her race by two minutes. 
This and one it's only been three years since starting between it. Between the two while collaborating on Kinda their passion fucking project. popping off. Later that month, on January 30th, a close race occurred between Hazel and Cole, where they both achieved the first sub-140s, but Hazel edged out Cole by 32 seconds with a 138.10. A similar race occurred later the same one, day, where bay? Cole took the world record back with a 134.58, Hazel still close behind. It seemed either player could beat the world record in any race at any time. This competition inspired others to search for strategies no, no more to drive the time down me. even further. It seemed a small community surrounding Battle for Bikini Bottom was starting to unify and take form. For over a week after the 134, Battle for Bikini Bottom on SRL went quiet. Up until this point, it was Missania? quite active with frequent sessions and world records. Then, to break the silence on February 10th, 2013, Cole uploaded an astonishing time of 127.31 to his YouTube channel. Jesus Christ, the Cole's the chosen one, the prodigy. Left Hazel's personal best the actual fucking the goofy best. goober. At this point, Cole had solidified himself as the fastest battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunner. Aside from improvements in movement and consistency, Cole's run introduced new cutting-edge strategies that this further showcased needy. the collective creativity amongst himself, Hazel, Nathan, and the few others in their small community. Here's what a speedrun of Battle for Bikini Bottom Any% percent now looks like. Big damage boost? What the fuck is this? Big out of bounds? Sponge drowning? Nice. I think the current world record isn't too much lower than an hour 27. So this guy was really ahead. I'm pretty sure it's like 56 minutes, I think. Somewhere in that ball. Not to spoil. Oh, it's 43. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. I didn't know it got that low. I haven't kept up in a little while. I do remember when it did get to that first sub hour though. I think Shift was the first one to do it, right? Shift solidified himself as the fucking battle for bikini bottom demon. Cole's 127 gained a lot of traction on YouTube, inspiring new players to join races, search Did for strategies, viral? and contribute to the community. The next evolution of dance. inspired by the run named Cooper Crisp created a knowledge base containing all strategies known for speedrunning battle for Bikini Bottom up until that point. Although long since outdated, that knowledge base is in the description if you'd like to check it out. With a small community formed, a fully recorded any percent run gaining traction, and world record competition, many fans who had forgotten about Battle for Bikini Bottom would rediscover the game and watch these exciting developments from the sidelines. Cole's and Hazel's Twitch channels would start averaging 20 to 50 viewers per livestream, nice, where they'd attempt yeah. to beat the game as quickly as possible. The small community dedicated to progressing one of their favorite games continued to gain traction. After the first sub-130 was achieved, the Battle for Bikini Bottom community knew the race to sub-120 was on. Unlike the early days of laziness and secrecy, <laughs> runners enthusiastically shared yeah, rest tracks in pace. and knowledge rest in peace, the KT. All information known was Fucking accessible, so it was up to the runners' execution to best their rivals. A fair game of friendly competition. Cole and Hazel continued Nothing friendly in battle for attempts on Twitch, where dozens Fucking would watch throat. patiently as they tried to lower the game below an hour and 20 minutes. On March 7, 2013, Cole finished a run in 126.49, but its video evidence has since been lost to time. Aww. The next world record that we do have video of would take place on March 9th during another one of Cole's Can't Twitch streams. Can't believe that's nine years ago. Barely it's missing crazy. the next minute threshold. Despite being so close to 124, <clears throat> Cole presumably took an extended break from speedrunning BFBB after this run. But come summer, Cole and Hazel would begin organizing races again. And together, they'd progress the game while new runners joined the fray.
Thank you, Reset Lucian and Sea Breeze. Cole Shift is king. Dominance Shift is the guy. On August 10th, when Hazel would complete a run of BFBB any percent in 122.24. And with several new runners joining the community, it was only a matter of time before their combined efforts would generate new strategies. SRL races would continue until the summer's end, and on August 17th, 2013, Cole pulled off some really sick shit. That was cute. He gave it that old, like, Quake Ultra Kill shit, or Unreal Tournament Ultra Kill shit. Yeah, this game just goes fucking hard for no reason. Oh. Holy crap. So fun, funny, man. Cole had clutched the 119 live on stream. A showcase and celebration of the community's about. progress throughout the summer of 2013 with some major route changes that demonstrated how much more optimized the game truly was. Jellyfish Caves included some small optimizations that improved the consistency of Dilemma Skip and the clip back into the caves from under the map, and some new socks were collected in downtown to help trade for a fourth Patrick spatula, which was one of many spatulas swapped in place of others throughout the run. The biggest routing change throughout the first three worlds, however, was in Gulagoon Pier. It had been entirely reworked with a new damage boost to reach the bumper boats early. Oh, damage boost shit is so by wacky. skipping to the end of the level and working in reversed order. This type of strategy had become a staple of BFBB speedruns. Another sequence break was found in Rock Bottom, which initiates the level's final master. challenge from the start of the level. The developers intended for the challenge to be initiated locally with a bubble bounce, but speedrunners could not excited, activate it Captain. from afar by using the cruise bubble. This was much faster than the previous method, which was to glide across the gap as Sandy, switch to SpongeBob, and do the time challenge in its intended manner. While both of these methods effectively sequence break all of rock bottom, the cruise bubble method was fast enough to justify saving the whole level for later. In its place, Spongebob's dream was completed earlier than intended by the developers. Thanks to Cole's Fuck original the developers. sequence breaks from 2012, it's possible to enter Spongebob's dream before unlocking the third Before I forget, I wanted to look this up before actually starting this. What else did they make post-Battle for Bikini Bottom? I think this was like their actual only game. Like they closed after this. Curse of the Flying Dutchman or something. They were Heavy Iron Studios, right? Yeah. So, Battle for Bikini Bottom, 2003. Then they made the Sp SpongeBob SquarePants movie. They made the Incredibles game and the Incredibles Rise of the... So, they only ever made, like, video... Or, um... Cartoon or animation video game tie-ins. In 2020, they made a Pac-Man game. 2017, they made something called Amazing Odyssey. 2015, something called Fat City. And then something called Harley Pasternak's Hollywood Workout. What the fuck is that? What is Harley Pasternak's Hollywood Workout? What could that you possibly even attention? mean? Alright, this is kind of lit. Can I speedrun this? Which one of these programs do you want to Oh my god, it's the Harley Pasternak. Let's get started. I'm going to come up with roots. Moving by going into a nice jog. All right. So, we're going to keep the weight on the toes. We're going to keep pumping those elbows and arms forward and back. Man, imagine making Battle for Bikini Bottom and then making this. On this one. Picture yourself some What a glow up. Is it a beach? Uh, and then what was the other one? Their most recent one was that Pac-Man game. Oh, wait, what is this? They they co-developed with Crash Bandicoot, Marvel's Avengers, and Black Ops Cold War. So, they develop stinkers, but co-develop AAA games. Why? Fuck. Oh yeah, they made the Family Guy game. I saw that too. Sponge SpongeBob's Truth or Square? I don't remember that game at all. Amazing or Amazon Odyssey and Pac-Man don't even have uh, Wikipedia pages. 
right. So needless to say, they peaked. This was the start of major hub sequence breaks becoming useful in runs, further delinearizing Battle for Bikini Bottom speedruns. Dream would be completed early due to its new set of strategies allowing it to be cleared without the cruise bubble. At this Easier time, there existed a primitive setup coin? for a damage boost across the Dreamscape, later coined Oil Skip by runners of future generations. Oil Skip was added to BFBB's collection of janky damage boost skips, this one saving another major shiny object purchase. Damage and momentum boosts in general had become the game's most difficult hurdles to overcome in the run. Cole's world records included some Robo Sponge skip failures, Ooh. along with some audible relief after landing the new method for skipping Kelp Forest in his 119. Oh, we're strong. And that pure boost mentioned earlier was no joke either. Aside from the major route changes and intricate setups used to achieve sub 120, the community was able to apply newfound general knowledge to smaller areas. A section toward the end of the run became designated. Their Pac-Man game was Stadia levels, exclusive. Backtracking and exploiting level design with the cruise Stadia bubble. is the future. New cruise bubble knowledge was used to speed things up in some That's later in levels gaming's as well. apotheosis. Battle for Bikini Bottom was evolving from a linear brisk walk into a sequence broken speed run with some hype and challenging skips. With Cole's 119 demonstrating these great strides, he decided to take an extended break from BFBB to pursue projects with other Spongebob games. Hazel bowed out as well, returning to tool assisted work with some of her other passions and main focuses. Oh, that with just reminded BFBB me. Another game I wanted to look up is, a uh, Fuck, what was it? I think it was Jimmy Neutron... Oh, I have to look up Jimmy Neutron games now. There was this Jimmy Neutron PC game that a long time ago I, ch I was like deep into the speedrun community for, just waiting for when they finally fully optimized it. Because it has such a cool speedrun route, but it, it's still kind of long for me. It was like 40 minute world record, but I knew it could go lower, but I haven't checked in on it in a while. Here it is. Jimmy Neutron vs. Jimmy Negatron. It had such a cool speedrun route. Let's see. Let's see how they've optimized it. They've got it down to 11 minutes? Okay. Holy shit. Wow. They popped off. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, like I said, uh, this was one that I followed a long time ago. And at, the and at the time, I was like, damn, whatever it was, like 40 minutes, it's a little long for me, but it's kind of cool. Like, the, the glitches were cool. And I knew it could go lower, and I was right, all the way down to 11 minutes. I adored this game as a kid, holy fuck. I never played it. I just saw the speedruns for it, and thought it was, like, goofy and cool. But yeah, it looks like you can skip that whole thing. Okay, I've got two new speed games on the docket at some point. These greatest Prime visionaries Cooley. on leave, the scene died down throughout the fall of 2013. But the renaissance was far from over. Winter of 2013 to 2014. Cole's world record of 11959 still standing since summer, with no potential. Not for challenges. long though, baby. It wasn't until February when Hazel finally wrapped up her current projects and aspirations, then decided to try for a 119 of her own. And after several attempts in February of 2014, she finally closed out a 11926. Not only had Hazel achieved her own 119, <clears throat> she had finally reclaimed her world record after six no, months still do the of Hobbit silence at some point. in the BFBB community. Despite avoiding some of the more intimidating strategies from Cole's run, many of her segments had improved movement compared to that of the former world record. Hazel's emphasis on consistency also generated a new setup for oil skip, which was quite similar to the one used in present day. There's even what appears to be an attempt at manipulating Robo Patrick's spins, a strategy that wouldn't be fully realized for years to come. In a many pioneer aspects, then, she really fucking went wild into the future of BFBB speedruns. But this run still amounted to nothing more than a small blip in her legacy, relative to a discovery that she'd make three days later that would change the course of BFBB's history forever. Oh. 
cruise boosting. Fuck yeah. Slow. Fuck that. Cruise boost that bitch. Oh yeah. This does seem to be a game changer. Jesus Christ. This shit is sick. Jump you can't make. Fuck that. The world is your oyster with cruise boosting. Jump Fuck, dirty barnacles. It's going in. Yeah. I had sex with some girls after I told them I knew how to cruise this. <laughs> it was pretty cool. If you want to have sex and fuck anyone you- Whoa, slow down there, Thanks, Eager Thanks, so We haven't even explained how the trick works or how it was even found. I'll take it from here. I'm Average Trey, here to explain the most iconic discovery hey, in Trey. all of Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunning. On February 24th, 2014, Hazel discovered that it's possible to input the cruise bubble and the bubble ball on the same frame. Battle for Bikini Bottom runs at 60 frames per second, so hitting these two moves on the same frame is a 1 60th of a second window. Doing this caused the cruise bubble to interrupt the bubble ball, setting its speed boost to go on indefinitely. This speed boost is what we'll refer to as a cruise boost. This interruption causes Spongebob's increased speed from bowling to be added as a constant to his total speed, causing a new force to push him regardless of whether a player is inputting a movement. It doesn't seem active, that fast. Spongebob can run with his walking speed plus however fast the interrupted bowling shot was. This discovery sends the old school BFBB Skype group into frenzy. Now, yeah, I mean, it's clearly a huge difference, but it doesn't seem both that unlocked, big. Spongebob can potentially cross more gaps, traverse levels slightly faster, and even moonwalk. But the glitch did have its limitations at first, since the initial discovery's slow speed had few useful applications. Another small development was made in March when Cole found that sliding against a wall during activation can capture more speed, but it was very inconsistent. It wouldn't be until months later when Cole would discover the fast now and that consistent looks pretty method good. of cruise boosting we've all come to know. Thanks for the high octane analysis, Trevor. Now, Let's take a look at something that I don't think anyone would consider average. On February 22nd, 2014, that was a big Cole day. posted this horrifying strategy in the BFBB Skype group. By damage boosting and performing a precise slam into this lifeguard tower, SpongeBob retains his boost momentum and gets stuck. Because his vertical velocity was stopped while still being boosted, he'd then slide off the tower and float oh. across the large body of goo. With the right damage boost angle, it's possible to land on the island previously only accessible from the end of Gulagoon Pier, the world's final zone. So Cole had effectively found a way to skip all of Gulagoon and complete the objectives in opposite order, similar to how Hazel and Nathan broke Kelp Forest in 2012. This insane Loco. discovery would be named Sponge Gliding and saved around 90 seconds in the any percent speed. Not run. bad! It also obsoleted several staples of the run, such oh. as walking under the moat, advanced sea caves platforming, and the damage boost to skip the pier. They sure were happy to ditch that one. Cruise boosting and sponge gliding being found within such a short period of time excited and reignited the Battle for Bikini Bottom community once again. Cole would demonstrate these new, mind-blowing tricks in his record achieved on March 23rd, 2014. With the increased cruise boost speed from sliding off of a wall, Cole could utilize the bubble bash attack to make a super jump out of a move that was horizontally motionless before. Cole's 117.39 would use cruise boosting sparingly, though this was expected with the introduction of a trick this precise. Its frame perfect timing True was an anime. intimidating concept for those who didn't understand it, making the new route far less accessible to new and experienced players alike. Cruise boosting, along with sponge gliding, would be the first of Easy many tricks one. that would increase the skill Dead. gap between Cole and the other runners. This would initiate the first of many eras in Battle for Bikini Bottom's history where world record and non-world record routes looked entirely different. Due to its apparent inconsistency, cruise boosting discouraged Hazel from doing attempts for a while. She couldn't seem to capture speeds as fast as Cole's, and Cole had trouble articulating exactly what he was doing to achieve these cruise boosts based on feel and muscle memory. It seemed for a while the community would band together to focus on strat hunting while Cole alone would progress the any percent world record. Cole's natural well, affinity for learning new and precise strategies kept world spoils. record attempts exciting throughout the upcoming explosion of new strategies in BFB. Man, that sponge gliding Many shit's all over the place. Utilized the cruise boost glitch, which was quickly becoming the backbone of these speedruns. On May 4th, 2014, Cruise Cole Recent discovered code. a new method for cruise boosting that made SpongeBob go even faster. With this boost, SpongeBob can run at twice the speed he could before. 
Now, See, now that's more like it. That's that good shit. The time, and gaps twice as large could now be jumped. The speed of a cruise boost is determined by the speed of the bowling shot on the frame it's interrupted. So by making the bowling shot faster, Cole could trap a boost so it could double his running speed. He did this by activating a first cruise boost to make his turning speed slower, naturally keeping him face toward the flat surface. The flat Aurora. surface is important because it allows for the cruise bubble to be used while moving. By sliding against the flat surface, Cole could build speed to make his bowling shot faster and interrupt it by cruise boosting. The result was a speed boost faster than ever thought possible, with greater consistency too. This method of cruise boosting is still used by all runners of Battle for Bikini Bottom to this day. Eight years later, not bad. Real staying existing power. Cruise boost Good work, segments Cole. were reoptimized and new ones began springing up. The Battle for Bikini Bottom community and fans of Cole's channel would wait patiently for a full run showcasing this breakthrough. Damn, that looks difficult. And that's they what finally I, that's did what it saying. on June 6th, 2014, when Cole streamed a 115.56 on his Twitch channel. Now, 117 to 115 might seem like a pretty underwhelming time save for being able to run twice as fast, True. but it makes sense when you take into account the new routing balance of BFBB. Cruise boosting can only be used after the completion of the first two boss fights. As we've already established, 40 spatulas are required to challenge the second boss, Robo Patrick, and unlock the cruise bubble, the titular cruise in cruise boosting. With cruise boosting, Battle for Bikini Bottom's routing possibilities were blown wide open. Is Only the cousin? spatulas chosen to be collected after Robo Patrick could utilize cruise boosting, and only 34 remained before it was time for the final boss. Now, instead of only considering which stages were fastest to complete in which order, time lost from collecting any spatula in the former section of the game had to be weighed against the time saved from collecting it in the latter. Essentially, nearly every spatula in the game now had two distinct times taken to obtain. The gameplay and strategies available in the latter section of the game were so distinct from the former that they almost felt like entirely different games from one another and routes reflected that. Terms like linear and lack of freedom could no longer be used to describe Battle for Bikini Bottom speedruns. It seemed like any small strategy could throw off the balance of the entire run, causing a full reroute. And Cole's 115 demonstrated just that. It made use of cruise boosting in many new areas, with some spatulas entirely dependent on the trick being usable. For such a complex and arcane trick at the time, he executed it Good with use of arcade. And consistency. But Cole's next implementation was even more impressive. Thanks, Sub Noah. One frame, reaction based, triple jumps. Impossible. By Human beings can't do into it. The air, do the witch. state is treated as grounded for one frame. On this exact frame, the player can input moves only usable while grounded, such as the bubble bowl, the bubble bash, or a jump. Unlike damage boosts such as Oil Skip, where setting up a slide across a ledge allows a larger frame window for inputting, these newly implemented mid-air moves were true frame-perfect tricks. The Jesus reactionary Christ. aspect comes from SpongeBob's Hurt animation having five different variations. Cole reacted to which of the five animations appeared after taking damage, <laughs> Look at that smug then bastard the jump what a, what within one sixtieth of a second to gain that extra height and distance. Cole implemented this tech to obsolete a death warp in jellyfish fields and to collect a sock before sponge gliding. If the one frame input is missed, however, Cole could just try again, as missing either of these triple jump setups would just place him back on the platform where he started. It was low risk, high reward. The strategy Dude, it doesn't Cole seem like you lose a lot of time if you fuck it up. Distanced himself from the rest of the runner's technical Man, wouldn't shift start running the game? The fastest cruise boosts I thought he started really early, but it's already 2014. Displayed in a run thus far. He even showed off a new method for getting on top of the chum bucket. He started in 2016. Uh, up a set of cliffs and bouncing to the buttons mounted on the side of the building. Yet another display of Cole's cutting edge gameplay and the evolution of BFPB into a more optimized speed run. With all of the new and exciting tricks showcased in Cole's 115, many prospective runners gained interest in Battle for Bikini Bottom. But with so many intimidating and complex strategies throughout the run, many found the game inaccessible. That's what I've been saying. It's Cole fucking hard. decided to create a tutorial video on how to achieve a fast, a tier one G -day. modern cruise boost. I'm not sure how successful this will be, but I'm gonna try to give a tutorial on how to do fast cruise boost. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hold forward, and then I'm gonna do a cruise boost, and after that, 
And like as the cruise boost is happening, I'm gonna hold left and then do another cruise boost. Oh, now I understand. And then you get, if you do it right, then you'll get fast cruise boost. What in the goddamn hell are you talking about? Many found Cole's explanation hard to follow. Sounds like you. Don't you ever say that again. Hazel in particular I'm cites that she still had trouble cruise boosting even after this tutorial was published, further demotivating her from running. It seemed like Cole would continue venturing solo further down the rabbit hole of implementing advanced strategies, while members of the community, including himself, continued on the R&D side. With so many new high-pressure strategies being implemented what? in such- What? What's she doing? Okay, well, I'll be right back. I'm gonna take Tetra out. Give me one sec. Tetra, what are you doing? I'm back. She just wanted to eat some grass. He's a tier one Yoder. The Prime ZX and the Resub Not Real. So Miles and Emily such a short period of time, it seemed the first renaissance of Battle for Bikini Bottom was at its peak. The community watched in awe Dog not as Cole well. performed ambitious maneuvers No, she, I think she's been comprehend. feeling fine. It was only a matter she's of time She's been playing and going crazy today. It's just One sometimes she just likes to eat grass. The passion and ingenuity of the 2014 I don't know community. Why. Does a it moment too. that symbolized Which Battle I think for she Bikini Bottom's transition into something more than a forgotten game from the early 2000s. On July 4th, Cole completed a BFBB any percent speedrun in 115.26, a solid improvement on his first 115. But on July 10th, 2014, Cole completed his masterpiece. Not a real masterpiece, still not world record. It was pretty wild, race. What's your advice to a 19 year old? Stop aging. Aging is cringe. Stay young. There's the resub steal in the prime Jason. This is looking pretty good from Cole. That cruise boost is kind of kind of yucky. Cole's really been in it for the long haul, an OG. Was Cole the first one to discover the uh, what the fuck was it? No, it was Yoshi Master. Yoshi Master was the first one to make that giant breakthrough with the uh, menu or er, hand desync. That's what it, that's what the fuck it was. Yoshi Master, who's now I guess dead. Cole and Hazel just buried him. He's a tier one Donovan. KT gonna come back and take it with a secret technique. No, he retired. He's done. Now he's on TikTok or something, I bet. Called it quits. Holy crap. <laughs> Summer 13. I never thought I'd get a time like that. Despite a couple of major slip-ups, Cole's 112 demonstrated the most optimized spatula and sock route of its time, ordering objectives in a way no player had attempted before. This level of optimization was extremely impressive for a game entirely optimized by a small group of friends until this point. Together, Cole and the rest of the community had built a speedrun that would inspire players years oh, after they were gone. A lot of new faces. Old school kind of get a little Cole wacky in there? 12 was the natural conclusion to his Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunning career. 
Any further improvements would require serious grinding to lower the time, which he was not interested in pursuing. Without motivation Chad. from anyone else to challenge the 112, any percent speedrun activity gradually reason. slowed to a stop. It was truly the end of an Sayana? era. Despite announcing his retirement from any percent speedruns, Cole continued to search for obscure glitches in Battle for Bikini Bottom at his own leisure. Hazel began focusing 100% on tool-assisted speedrunning in BFBB as she had also long since lost interest Aww. in real-time attempts. It seemed glitch showcasing and tassing were Cole's and Hazel's respective final destinations. Despite their impactfulness on the game's world record history, they never had interest in grinding their small project competitively. Their records were a product of their passion for turning uncharted territory into a showcase of remarkable skips and glitches. Along the way, they solved many of the game's I problems. I mean, I guess when you put that many years into it, you probably just Once want to a stop. A -thon, I've never speed ran a game for like a year, and complex let alone four. In November of 2014, Hazel would go on to create the first Battle for Bikini Bottom any percent tool assisted speedrun in 104.37 and 4 frames. With Cole's 112 speedrun and Hazel's 104 TAS, the Titans nice were finally words. satiated. Though they'd continue recording challenge and TAS segments for leisure, this would conclude the first renaissance of Battle for Bikini Bottom. Then Despite 2016. The routing advancements, and viewer interest slowing down, the community's Skype group remained active for the next year. Much like the Robo SpongeBob skip, debug trigger skips were found for the Flying Dutchman and Prawn boss fights in August of 2015. Though Prawn skip had no use in any percent at the time, Dutchman skip was implemented soon after its discovery. Sometime in 2015, the community discovered that the Xbox version of Battle for Bikini Bottom Even saved better. a significant amount of time due to its faster loads between zones. I feel like that's Cole something they should have recognized August way earlier. Using his Xbox 360 in compatibility mode, he achieved a 109.29, breaking another 10-minute barrier in the speed run. Zero. Though he felt it wasn't as impressive as his 112, the run still sub 110 due to the loading time advantage on the Xbox 360, as well as the new debug trigger method for defeating the Flying Dutchman. The run's transition to Xbox 360 further demotivated the community from learning and running BFBB, as most only had access to the GameCube version. Wow. Battle for Bikini Bottom was not a very competitive speedrun at the time, and its community members that, preferred to optimize it casually, instead of using the intimidating strategies that Cole was implementing. It seemed the difficulty of the run had outgrown the community, with its precise and arcane tricks. Realizing this, Cole began working on an any percent speedrun tutorial that would teach the community his methods for executing these tricks. He claimed to get the OG Xbox disc. Yeah, but you need the OG the GameCube further, disc too. He felt completing the guide for new runners was of greater priority. Cole's tutorial video would reach the five spatula mark before his progress discontinued. That hand technique time, on controllers always blows my mind. I see this from like fighting game players. What's it called? The claw, I think. At this time, Damn it. Oh, moved the world record further. He felt completing the guide for new runners was of greater priority. Cole's tutorial. I like. I don't know how people can actually play a game like that. It feels so foreign to me because I've tried it when trying to get good at fighting games in the past. It's fucking unmanageable. I feel like I have absolutely no control of it. The claw is vastly used in melee and smash in general. Yeah, and not even that, like, as you see here in speedruns. Some of, like, the most talented gamers use that claw. Like, Andrew, actually. I remember when we used to play fighting games together or against each other, he used the claw, and I just didn't get it. I never could understand it, and I still don't. It's so confusing. It, I just feel, like, so out of, like, the pilot seat. But it's something I've always recognized. Some of, like, the highest level gaming athletes use the claw video would reach the five spatula mark before his progress discontinued. Is at the this time, clumsy? speed running at large was growing rapidly due to the success of Games Done Quick and several personalities on the live stream platform, Twitch. But with the Battle for Bikini Bottom community dying down, it could not capitalize on this growth. Cole tried submitting Battle for Bikini Bottom to several Games Done Quick events, but was declined from all of them. Oh, Playing the, the game on a stage for thousands to see would have been the ultimate finale going out with a bang but unfortunately it went out with a whimper battle for bikini bottom would once again be left behind no despite the community's humble size and ambitions the speedrunners of battle for bikini bottom kept the game alive for several years and entertained its old-time fans along the way cole managed to reach 1,000 subscribers on youtube through uploading glitch showcases go, challenge runs and world records 
He celebrated this feat by returning for one final stream, during which he ran through all of his old speed games for the fans who were still around. The marathon what finished game is with that? other than Battle for Bikini Bottom. And Can someone tell me what game that was? That actually looked kind of lit. That definitely wasn't Spongebob. Oddworld? Really, Oddworld has a cool speed run? His splits say... Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice it. Sorry, I didn't even look at his splits. I was just looking at, like, the pixelation here. Yeah, you're right. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. And final stream, during which he ran through all of his old speed games for the fans who were still around. The marathon finished with none other than Battle for Bikini five. Bottom any percent, after that, man. which he revealed his face and bid the community farewell. I just wanna Thank you, Jace Next. have this so that later on, uh, if I watch this video, I can see how I looked, where I am and all that, yeah. So, that's about it. Bye, Cole! Or so they all thought. But what would it take to revive this obscure game a second time? Uh, what would it take to not only Gasker? improve Cole's record, but to make the game progression Bits exciting Austin. again? Did BFBB have potential to become more than just a nostalgic project, or would the passion behind it develop further and grow into something greater? All of these questions and more would soon be answered in the coming revolution, during what our new protagonists would later refer to as the second renaissance of Battle for Bikini Bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm SM Loader. See you all in the next phase. God, it's so good. Subscribe. Battle for Bikini Bottom speedruns are so fucking wild. To watch. And we're not even to the modern day. Please, can we watch it? Yeah, we'll watch part two. When I was talking to Shift about it, he said part two is his pride and joy, so I definitely want to watch part two. And like I said, I had seen this when it had first uploaded a long time ago. I obviously didn't remember a ton of it, but I never, I don't think I ever saw part two. So that will be entirely new for me. Current world record for Oddworld Stranger's Wrath is 2458. That's pretty good. Maybe that might be worth checking out for a route. Why do speedrunners play the most obscure games? I think it's the most fun. The more obscure the game, the more interesting the speedrun. This is so sweet. Yeah, the Gary Come Home song should be playing right now. Alright, let's ride part two. From 2012 through 2015, we followed a small group of friends as they built a community surrounding Here's one of their twisted. favorite games. But after several years of revolutionizing their passion project, Battle for Bikini Bottom was, once again, left behind. But little did they know... Thrown in the dumpster. In the toilet. Thanks, you said... Und. You said Elgato. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm SM Loader. And this is part two of how speedrunning revived Battle for Bikini Bottom. Ever seen the American speedrun? I'm not sure. I don't think With so. With the growth of speedrunning from 2012 through 2016 came a new sense of competitiveness in the hobby. The advent of open broadcaster software and a mm -hmm. high abundance of products used for retro game capture made recording and streaming runs more accessible than ever before. Many personalities in the speedrunning community built themselves up on Twitch during this period as the rising popularity of streaming only complemented the rising motivation. Oh, for Super Mario runs. Sunshine speedruns are also flashy fucking movement cool. showcased in many of these games grabbed the attention of thousands. Platformers especially became the leading titles in the charge to make speedrunning Thanks, sub sensational. Sub raise. But today, we'll be focusing on a 3D platformer that was off the radar. 
Battle for Bikini Bottom had gone through a complete transformation from 2010 through 2015, abandoning its grindy, tedious collectathon elements in favor of creative routing and a variety of advanced and technical strategies. Cruise boosting especially transformed BFVB into a true platforming game that centralized its new and unique movement system. Thanks to Cole, Hazel, and their small group of friends, the potential of the game had been unlocked. So with all these bells and whistles, it was only a matter of time before someone a discovered menace. Battle for Bikini Bottom in its revamped form, right? And his name? Well, T-Pain. There was no telling how long it would take, since the community had died down harshly since the summer of 2014. Unfortunately, there were many demotivators holding the game back from reaching its potential. The few tutorials in existence were extremely shallow, runners weren't motivated to pick up the game's obscure yet optimal Xbox version, and the community hadn't received any significant exposure. That's a weird a one though, because I don't think it was that this uncommon. Was in stark contrast Plus, you can just to download it off the arcade. The I thought. speedruns of this era. They offered an abundance of learning resources, were optimized on more popular speedrunning consoles, and were supported by streamers popular enough to be partnered on Twitch. The more established communities attracted entry-level speedrunners by the dozen, and due to the amount of effort being- Tetra, what are you doing? Tetra, what are you doing? You're being a wild animal. back. Tetris being wacky. Thanks to tier one, Matthew. Being put into them, they evolved and optimized crazy fast. Though BFBB had its few visionaries and creatives, it had never been developed on yeah, a scale Tiana, I think she has enough nearly that stomach. large. So she's got so, some... So, even after its complete uh, transformation, like special food Battle to help Bikini with that. Bottom surely had at least one more hidden layer of potential. Just practically begging to be Riku. explored, but it would take the fresh ambition of new, competitive runners to decipher the mechanics of Cole's arcane tricks and use them in full runs of their own. And still, if the game were to survive and thrive, they would also have to address the community's flaws holding back its potential. There are Belfer no flaws. Bikini Bottom would eventually need someone with motivation to not only make the game faster, but also to solve these issues outside of the game as well. But as a community so small and so unmotivated, it seemed like it would never regain life like it once saw, ever again. That is, until December 5th, 2015, what a when year. an 80% speedrun in 119.25 offered a glimmer of hope. This speedrun was uploaded by user Fuff118. Why is this significant? Well, the meds it all was day. his first upload ever and, and an immediate second place spot. Yeah, not bad. It wasn't known until later that Fuff had spent the previous month learning and practicing the speedrun on his own through referencing past runs of the game. Fuff had been one of the few players up until now who took the initiative to dissect Cole's runs and figure out exactly what the man had done to go so fast. For such a small community, his motivation to grind was impressive. Not to mention the fact that he was actually able to finish learning the game, a feat far too intimidating for many to tackle. Fuff's yeah, it's pretty crazy that they didn't bother the teaching anyone else. Many torment runners in the community. His appearance from the shadows and his lightning fast learning showed the retirees that their passion project still had life to live. Slide. Back in the old days, Cole and Hazel rarely attempted runs outside of races. Cole cites that there wasn't much motivation to grind due to the community's small size and low interactivity. But Fuff was a solo grinder. And by the end of January in 2016, Man, it he improved so his cool. time to 116.06 on GameCube. And at the beginning of February, he had already acquired an Xbox 360 to keep pushing for sub-110. 
he was on track to become the next world record holder. He's doing it! Up speedrun grind garnered a steady following while he streamed the game on Twitch, the premier live stream platform for gaming and uh, It'll never last. With new Twitch activity in the fad. game's directory on Twitch, on viewers who had previously it, lost you know, interest in BFBB began checking a, out for the stream. Fleeting. With a humble average of 10 viewers, he'd streamed silent attempts with intent to improve the any percent world record. Though a mysterious character at first, Fuff started to communicate with his viewers by typing in chat and expressed interest Thanks in helping Brian. them learn the strategies Nicole. that he'd come to figure out on his own. One of his viewers, Jared's Giants, had gained interest in BFVB during the cold days, but never went through with learning due to the run's inaccessibility. Now, with help from Fuff and the small community forming in his stream, Jared was able to finish learning the game. Yet another glimmer of hope for Thanks those who thought the community had you, reached its expiration date. Fuff's effort to single-handedly learn the speedrun and help his viewers understand the game did not go unnoticed. Many started gathering into his streams with the hopes of witnessing something spectacular. And though he only communicated through chat on some occasions, his passion radiated through his gameplay. On March 5th, 2016, he'd finally get his first big break. Ooh, the first non coal world record? Oh, true, Hazel did have world record quite a few times. The run's looking promising! For the first time in nearly two years, Battle for Bikini Bottom 80% had a new world record holder, who'd improved on Cole's personal best by four seconds. With an active world record holder, Not fresh bad. and motivated to grind for improvement, the original BFVB community would soon witness their foundations mm -hmm. experience a revival. Fuff brought to the table greater interest in optimizing movement and seeing what else BFVB had to offer. He'd soon create the first substantial route for the 100% speedrun and pick up Cole's unfinished 100% within game codes project. With experience collecting every spatula in the game in a variety of scenarios, Fuff's movement would quickly evolve to the best the game had seen up until this point. Fuff would soon achieve the first 108 in Battle for Must the say it's really impressive that he was able to figure out all this just by watching runs. True. Though Fuff's world record still used the Though I also did that Cole with the House of Caravan just saying. Still some small there's no tutorials, just I watched it and Fuff's runs showcased it, early attempts to manipulate well, Robo Sandy's clothesline move by luring her to the edge of the stage, Granted, which would cause it to the initiate game was only 30 seconds long. And in the Robo Patrick boss fight, he tried manipulating the spins from a different position than those who came before him. Still, however, this strategy gave inconsistent results. Fuff also made better use of the note cycle in Squidward's Dream to make the segment much more consistent. His understanding of cruise boost movement mechanics was also impressive for how recently he'd started running. The new world record holder was making an effort to polish the game he'd inherited, allowing for more consistent paces and faster improvement. Fuff again improved his world record to a 108.24. We're approaching that one hour barrier. And now, his stream community was far more established and supported his efforts to optimize the game. Some members of the older community even returned to watch Fuff's improvement, oh. and they were eager to ignite the chat whenever he entered the final boss on world record pace. It was reminiscent of the good old days. Fuff's it, it, to be fair, it's only been a year. <laughs> like, it's not like it was ancient. And present, yet still, many could not get over the hurdle of learning the speedrun. Fuff had continued some of Cole's previous projects, but not his tutorial series. Unlike Jared, you, most people were more than reluctant to ask a stranger to teach them a full speedrun. However, there still existed the possibility of another brave soul taking the Fuff approach and learning entirely on their own. A stream titled Ruining Your Childhood began appearing more and more frequently in the Battle for Bikini Bottom directory alongside Fuff's, where he'd recently achieved the first 107 on April 8th. After this run, he decided to take a break from the category to focus on 100% speedruns. During his leave, this other channel became the hotspot for wonder who that community is. members to watch any percent speedruns. And this channel was run by another up-and-comer, Shift HD. And Shift was already in the low 120 range on the GameCube version when others started to take notice. Thanks Another runner some. motivated by his own will to learn and grind the game during an era void of resources. And much like Fuff, 
He'd seemingly come out of nowhere. He was born in Bikini background. Bottom. But within God several streams, it, he'll fight shift started for it. opening up to viewers and began talking about picking up the Xbox version of the game to further his improvement. And once it arrived, he kicked into high gear, mock, which attracted man. the attention of other speedrunners interested in BFBB. At this point, Shift wasn't really involved in the community surrounding the game, though. He was only aware of Hazel's any percent task, which piqued his interest in cruise boosting and Cole's hey, former world pancake. record from which he'd learned the rest of the game. He was kind of on his own island, just doing his thing, day after day. It wasn't until Shift met Konasumi from a Twitch raid that he'd finally begin getting to know some of the people surrounding Battle for Bikini Bottom. Kona had expressed interest in learning to run Battle for Bikini Bottom in the past and had noticed Shift due to the frequency of his streams. The two chatted for a bit and Shift eventually decided to try creating the first full BFBB any percent tutorial after he'd achieved sub 110. With a time this competitive, it would Spunky assure Bob, the explanations in the video me were later. at least decent enough to help his new friend yeah, learn pretty cool stuff over there. Kona would patiently wait for the creation of the guide, as would some other lurking prospective runners. Setting a goal time of 109 caused some community Thank members you, to wonder, would Shift eventually attempt to beat Fuff's world record? Mm. But Shift didn't know the answer to that question. His primary motivation behind achieving this goal was allowing himself to create the tutorial video for Kona and the rest of the small community beginning to form around his channel. And at this point, Shift probably wasn't even aware of what times Fuff was achieving. It seemed he was oblivious to anything outside of his own community, and the same could be said for what the other small communities on their own islands as well. <laughs> That is, speedrunning without even knowing what the world record is. Invited both Shift and Fuff to the new Battle for Bikini Bottom Discord server of 2016. This server was the replacement for the former Skype group of 2015 and earlier. Most of the older runners had joined the server, but they were all inactive. Aww. With Fuff and Shift being the only ones actively running and streaming the game, the rest of the reawakened community was anticipating and hoping that Shift would rise to the occasion and create world record competition something the community had not experienced in over two years. And with Fuff returning to any percent to defend his time, seeing as Shift's improvement was not stopping anytime soon, they all knew it was only a matter of time. While One of Fuff them had to die. His any percent runs, Shift finally achieved his 109 on May 25th, 2016. That same stream, he recorded the full any percent tutorial he'd promised Konosumi and the viewers he'd Do garnered people still from use streaming Skype? runs of BFBB. Psychopaths. Within the coming months, several new yeah, runners would finish it. learning the Shift's tutorial and submit full runs to the leaderboard. A phenomenon Shift cites as being more fulfilling and motivating than even improving his own personal bests. The first complete Battle for Bikini True Bottom any percent tutorial is linked in the description if you would like to check it out. Though BFBB was both Fuff and Shift's first attempt to speedrun, their community included other players Makes with prior experience in speedrunning. Jared's Giants was a former top runner in Luigi's Mansion, and he just rejoined the community with help from the new Any% Percent tutorial. Konasumi, who'd also developed a small Twitch following through speedrunning a variety of games, would oh, eventually learn through the time. tutorial as well. The new Battle for Bikini Bottom Discord server helped to kickstart their friendships, especially Jared's and Shift's, who'd form a much closer friendship with their passion for the game as the backbone. The community was proving its resilience even long after many thought it was cursed. Hey, Amy. The True. second revival it was is a good imminent, sound effect. and a grand occasion was needed to set it all in motion. Fuff would finally improve his own world record from 107.53 to 107.40 on May 28, 2016. Meanwhile, Shift's improvement continued even more dramatically leading into June. A few days after his second 109, he landed a low 108 on June Ooh, 3rd. That's getting scary. And only two days later, Shift finished Battle for Bikini Bottom in 107.39, which would have been a world record if Fuff had not achieved 107.31 only two days earlier. Oof, By now, rough. the view count Hate between their it. streams had doubled in anticipation for the coming competition. But later that same day, the wait was finally over. Yet another nice. new world record holder in the same year. The game's competition had been revived, yet most runners nice. knew there was still lots of room for improvement. Fuff would demonstrate this four days later in response to Shift's first world record. Man, this is just, this is malicious. There's no the mercy. Runners so close to the next minute mark. Piling corpses the race in the streets. Was on. 
Shift and Fuff's competition would mirror that of Coles and Hazel's from years ago, even to the extent of representing their respective countries. With USA and Canada chants flooding Twitch chat, <sighs> the second renaissance was in full force. On June 11th, 2016, Connie. viewers checked into Fuff's stream to find him on insane pace, nearly 50 minutes into the run. He was already on the perfect oh, line chokes, for a 106, over half he a minute ahead of he his 103. It. He's but not built for it. Could even skip straight to the 105 if the stars aligned. Yep. Choke. Blew it. Oof. Stinkmaster. Fuff was unable to clutch a 105, but did close out the first 106, and this run set the stakes way higher. The main focus of both world record contenders became achieving 105 before the other. Shift returned to running the next day and claimed a 106 of his own, missing Fuff's new world record from the day before by 9 seconds. Shift and Fuff would continue getting on promo. runs on great paces throughout the next several days, but couldn't close any out. On June 17th, 2016, Shift finally got a promising run out of the Dutchman's graveyard. Heading into the final fight, viewers anticipated the next world record trade. Soundtrack's kind of banging. Oh. I didn't even know he could fail that. Oh Despite my god, choking, it's disgusting. Shift did manage to get a new personal best of 106.48, missing Fuff's world record by just five seconds. Fuff would need to improve his time soon if he wanted to defend the title, but just two days later, Shift got another run into the Chum Bucket Lab. This time, he was on even pace with the run he choked only two days earlier. This was his chance. Is there some Michi in blue? Shift is that guy, though. He's not going to fuck this up. Yeah, what I tell ya. Yo! Will SpongeBob be able to neutralize the giant robot's brain? Let's go! Shift reclaimed the world record by a margin of eight seconds, Austin. bringing it back to the USA. With both runners actively grinding, the community wondered who would achieve the first 105. Fuff's best paces were faster by then far, from out of nowhere, Shift's consistency with Ms. music tricks allowed it. him to compete against his full runs. Their differing strengths and weaknesses made the competition all that much more exciting. The two would continue grinding for the remainder of June, with many great paces bleeding out under pressure. Then finally, on June 27th, 2016, the first 105 well. in Battle for Bikini Bottom any percent was achieved. At last, Shift achieved a minute break of his own and split really, really early. But it had been done. The run was retimed to 105.52, and now it was Fuff's turn to answer back. But Shift wouldn't go down without a fight. Though world record competition was fun for everyone to rally behind, Fuff and Shift were ultimately working together to optimize <gasps> strategy what? during the what races do you mean? for the 106 and the 105. They had Blasphemous. worked together to optimize the scene of enemies. where Fuff rediscovered a consistent Fucking strategy for the first two dives, and Shift built off of these dives to find the third. Shift found and implemented new tech in Robopatrick called Swing Stalling, which allowed for safe suspension above the arena while still dropping boxes to jump on as the fight progressed. Fuff finished developing the modern method of Robo Sandy manipulations that is still used in runs to this day. Their teamwork helped Battle for Bikini Bottom reach the minute threshold even Cole himself believed would be the end of the line. But Battle for Bikini Bottom's progression was far from over. In Meanwhile, fact, it's only the just beginning. For world record, the community now the record is 104 seconds. would not be realistically achievable with their current knowledge of the game. Having been speedrunning BFBB for the past few months, Shift had become knowledgeable enough to start making major changes to Cole's foundation route. With such scarce documentation, open-mindedness would be needed to complement his research. 
So Shift began spending most of his time raking through old playlists and forum posts, familiarizing himself with the game's buried, yet surprisingly deep history. He had to make sure that everything ever found was accounted for. After digging through Cole's old videos to learn about some of the strategies forgotten between the first and second revivals, Shift believed that he had come up with a way to save half a minute in the 80% speedrun by oh, repurposing an old trick with new ideas. He had rediscovered Dilemma Skip through watching Cole's full runs uploaded in 2014, which had apparently been dropped and replaced by the Cruise Boost method found later that same year. Though the cruise boost method was far easier to perform, it wasn't that much faster than the old school damage boost. By returning this spatula to the beginning of the run, Shift could now push one spatula before Industrial Park to the end of the run. If you recall our routing discussion from part 1, 40 spatulas must be obtained to enter Industrial Park to obtain the cruise bubble, which is used for cruise boosting, and 34 must be obtained afterward to finish the game. Mm -hmm. So now, by sacrificing a bit of time and bringing Patrick's dilemma back to the beginning of the run, he knew he could push back a spatula that would be much faster with cruise boosting to the end, and Shift knew just the one for the job. Hey, Vsauce. Josh here. Hey Josh. The prom. In the cases of the Flying Dutchman and Robo Sponge, oh, we haven't even talked about the prom. Debug trigger above the zone spawn point plays the finishing cutscene and awards a spatula, allowing the player to completely skip the boss fight. Initially, the prom's debug trigger wasn't even known about. Based on the location of the debug trigger in the Robo Sponge boss dog, fight, nice the bird. community theorized in 2015 that this would mean the prom's debug trigger would be located directly above the player's spawn point. Unfortunately, that meant that the prawn debug trigger would be located completely out of bounds, <laughs> assuming it even existed in the first place. Guess the runners were just out of luck then, right? <laughs> Wrong. Way back during Cole's days of glitch hunting the SpongeBob movie game in 2013, oh, he discovered the movie a game. clipping method that involved repeatedly activating the Sonic Wave guitar in a tight space. Noticing the similarities between game engines, a glitch hunter named Four decided to try this in BFBB a year later with the Cruise Bubble. After all, the movie game was built on BFBB's existing engine and assets. And as it turned out, it worked. Four Too the well. L clipping. He was arrested. He achieved the trick by mashing the shit out of the L trigger. With the advent of L clipping, the potential prawn trigger was reachable. Hazel and the gang ventured out into the void, and lo and behold, the prawn was skipped. Oh wow. In Battle for Bikini Bottom's second revival, Schiff started using prawn skip in his any percent runs. When compared to the slow, early game method of defeating prawn, this bad boy saved a hefty chunk of time. This prawn skip reroute, the first of many reroutes in 2016, would save nearly half a minute in the any percent. I can't believe it's not more. Outweighing the comparatively negligible time loss from completing Patrick's Dilemma without cruise boosting. So the next time you encounter something that's just out of reach, maybe you just aren't mashing hard enough. True. And as always, thanks for watching. Shifts began grinding runs with Easy tier one prom, Pluto. while Fuff would continue using the route he'd used to achieve 106 and nearly a 105. He'd been getting some wild paces lately and didn't see the need to update strats just yet. Shift, on the other hand, spent most of his attempts resetting in jellyfish fields after updating to the new route. He wasn't really getting anywhere despite running with faster strats. If Fuff wanted to reclaim the world record, now would be the time to strike. Night hungry. Oh fuck, he's going in. He's going turbo mode! Uh... Oh, Jesus. Fuff missed the world record by five seconds after failing the notorious Robo Sponge Skip but still managed to clutch his own 105. Eh. After finishing this run, Fuff decided to take record, an though. extended break from any percent and would focus on 100% until the end of the summer. World record competition paused indefinitely as Shift and Fuff worked on optimizing their own focuses solo. Though the competition for first choice you. had come to a close, the any percent speed run and the battle for Bikini Bottom community both continued to thrive. Oh, Jared! On July 7th, Shift finally achieved a personal best with the new prawn skip route, improving his world record by one second. Since his first 105, Shift had started using his microphone throughout the entire run rather than just in specific moments to communicate. It was a change of pace for what viewers came to expect at this point, 
and it allowed them to share all of the greatest moments you, and the not so fortunate ones. Wait, no, stop it, stop, no, no, fucking stop. Where can I even cruise boost? What, what am I gonna do? Oh what am my I... god, are you fucking kidding me? Some oh. admired Shift's display of passion while others just couldn't hang. Members of the community questioned how Shift's behavior would impact the image of their community, what? while others became hooked on his intense personality. But Shift claimed that venting allowed him to cool down. It's fucking SpongeBob. Time lost to avoid tilting. And we need him to be more professional. Seemed to back this Our up. PR this department. This was a good showcase, though. The one thing that went wrong that I attempted was the fucking um the camera angle. And I called the five. Hey, Reese, holding. <laughs> this controversy would stay relevant for the remainder of the summer, especially as other runners grew more passionate as well. We didn't do Sandy's dream. As summer progressed, the shared endeavor to revive Battle for Bikini Bottom formed a small friend group, which seemed to be a first in the game's history. In the old era, the runners were merely just friendly acquaintances. Wait, is this real? Is this a real story from you? I used to try to speedrun this. I spent over 200 hours and ended up not being able to beat my score from playing the game normally. Fucking rip 200 hours, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? How? Bro, 200 hours is actually an absurd amount of time to dedicate to one thing. Like, a, like that's a lot. 200 hours is enough to actually get close to 99ing something like runecrafting and runescape. That's a fucking ton. You couldn't beat, like, the no normal score. Jesus! I expect more of you. Come on! Shared pastime. But in this new age, the community would break its ice and become something more than just a group of friendly acquaintances. They'd become the Super Acquaintances. Shift in HD. The only thing quicker than his movement on the sticks is his lightning fast wit. You can't be a pro gamer master Damn, assassin. This voiceover you is have good. Bitches to pay for. Seriously, dude, what the f are you talking about? Jared's Giants. With a lifetime of experience in casino gambling, he's bound to erupt if things take a turn. No! Yeah, who no! did this voice? It is spot Jelly on. Jelly Swagger, Cole's young ward. Trained from birth by the wise sage, he's genetically engineered to put up with everyone else's bullshit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fuff, no! Fuff. <laughs> and Fuff, the 118th. Makes the sponge run smooth like maple syrup or some other Canadian thing. Here one day, gone the next. The international circle jerk of super acquaintances. In Roston. And although Cole lurked Whoever did that voiceover fucking crushed it. Man profile picture to match the other runners. He'd always been there. Just watching silently as the next generation continued what he started. So cute. The super acquaintances, Konasumi, and some of the other runners that were soon to enter the ring would become the group that revived Battle for Bikini Bottom a second time. Dedicating himself to the grind, Shift needed to address an ongoing issue with his Xbox 360 to further optimize the any percent world record. Up until this point, Shift's Xbox 360 had some emulation bugs forcing him to do workarounds for some of the strategies Cole and Fuff had used while they grinded any percent. Unable to find another Xbox 360 for sale locally, he ended up buying an original Xbox from a friend in his town just to give it a try. It was believed at this point that the original Xbox was slower than the 360 since the only completed run with it on the leaderboards appeared to have slow loads between Oof. zones. Little did they know that with a more updated model, such as the one that Shift had just unknowingly acquired, a small bit of time can be saved from each loading screen in BFBB. It was later realized that the switch to OG Xbox saves nearly one minute throughout Jesus, the Jesus, fuck it, that's half and the run! With an Xbox in good health, these fast loads were also 100% consistent. Shift began using the original Xbox on July 10th Thank and you, quickly uh, got a run Austin. that finished in one hour, four minutes, and 28 you, seconds. As of this world record, real time runs had finally eclipsed their tool assisted counterparts. Shift's 104 cut Hazel's task from 2014 by nine seconds. Well, that may be, but the task was done on a GameCube emulator, which actually loses minutes and loading times compared to Xbox, so I'd say it isn't even comparable. Yeah, shut the fuck up. He was pretty happy with his performance, despite not knowing that its level of optimization was likely about the same as his 10510, but with faster load times from the OG Xbox Switch. So suddenly, I think the OG nowhere, Xbox Switch is the 103 play. was looking possible. 
and many believed it would be the final minute achieved in Battle for Bikini Bottom, any percent. <laughs> for over a week, Shift would get runs on paces barely capable of 103, but they always seemed to crumble deep in the run. Oh, At this point, Battle for Bikini Bottom was a lot more optimized than it was back in the old era. Now, 20 second time losses were much more noticeable. Many runs died to the infamous Texas Sponge Glide, uh -oh. found during the sudden boom of strategies immediately following the discovery of cruise boosting many years ago. Shift eventually got a run that finished with a 104.21, a world record, yet the exact date is unknown and the VOD no longer exists. But when Why? Shift finally got another run past the Nut Glide, he'd be sure to preserve that one. Oh! Holy shit! Holy fucking shit! <laughs> it's over, boys. It's finally over! Holy shit! Faster than 106, 105, and 104 left. That is groundbreaking tech, the big clear. nut. The community paraded about how the game had finally reached its limits. <laughs> but deep down, they knew there was still a lot more work to be done out there. Two days later, Shift broke the... There was no webcam, but I imagine Shift was also doing this with his hands. This time using the Forbidden Skip to save nine seconds. Alright, we gotta go for Forbidden Skip. It was forbidden because its perceived inconsistency forbade runners from using it, if not to recover runs that were already bad. But as runners started using it more often, it seemed to get a bit better. Holy shit, I did it. This trick saved nine more seconds off oh, the that's a lot. by landing a precise ball off of a spiked block to launch toward the bouncing ball spatula. Despite its learning curve, Shift was willing to shoehorn it into the run just to have those extra nine seconds. It seemed worst. at this point, time saves that seemed previously pretty small were starting to look kind of thick. With a new world record two days after the first 103, it was clear that the game wasn't getting fully optimized anytime soon. Jared's gonna fucking global himself again. But Shift was running out of time save again. He brushed through the archives once more, searching for potentially useful strategies. The sacred text. Out were just never implemented. The Jedi database but looking for Camino. useful. Something entirely new was needed. And perhaps Maybe the key wasn't terrible. as far into the past as he initially thought. When approached by no, Shift for his routing way, endeavors, Austin. Fuff recalled that while running that. on the GameCube version, he used to collect the Save the Children spatula during his Any% percent runs. This spatula is awarded to Spongebob after popping the five mm. sets of balloons floating around the beach, which the children are clinging to for their dear lives. Mrs. Puff awards you a spatula for saving all of them. <laughs> well, most of them. But Fuff had stopped using this strategy after switching to Xbox and opted for Cole's spatula selection instead. The reason why was due to the balloon cycle being impossible to meet on the Xbox version of the game. But to truly understand why, we'll first have to talk about parallel universes. Is your subsidiary? I mean, version differences. Battle for Bikini Bottom's Xbox release made some notable alterations and improvements compared to the GameCube version. Its aspect ratio was slightly wider, and the audio is not compressed or absurdly loud in some areas. And yes, on the Xbox version of Kelp Forest, due to improved lighting effects, you can actually see what you're doing. Uh, it the textures sucks. are also full size, and like on the GameCube that, version, then. where they're downscaled to half the original size. And of course, the loading times are faster. But you already knew that. The difference we're focused on for collecting the Save the Children spatula, however, is the increased draw distance on the Xbox version. With this increased range for NPCs and other assets to spawn in when nearing them, the Balloon Kids would render and begin floating on their set paths much earlier than they would on the Easy GameCube one, version. Cherry. Due to the shorter draw distance on GameCube, Fuff could pop all the balloons reliably as he could get much closer to them before they would spawn. On the Xbox version, taking the same path would leave the balloons scrambled and in terrible locations due to them starting to float around far earlier. But if a cycle that accommodated the Xbox draw distance could be solved, this could be a lightning fast spatula. And a potential replacement for the extremely slow and casual Oh, they actually had to do that one? Puzzle. So the next day after the 103.36, oh, Shift really? spent the old world record a day still at the beach. That? To figure out where to start, Shift had to first acknowledge that starting by Larry's lifeguard tower was not working. This was the start Fuff had used on GameCube, but as mentioned before, the kids end up in awful locations with the Xbox's draw distance affecting the cycles. 
And because we're being pushed by a cruise boost, and some pillars sink when you stand on them anyway, waiting around for the cycle is not an option. So instead, Shift tried starting from a different area, the Sandcastle. It made sense to start here because it is also the respawn point after drowning from collecting the over the moat spatula. Upon respawn, the balloon cycles are reset and the nearby box provides the perfect surface to cruise boost off of. And as it turns out, the kid closest to the Sandcastle Island ends up in a favorable position even with the Xbox's increased draw okay. distance. Shift would therefore make this one the first in the new sequence. However, after respawning, Shift only got one shot at hitting the cruise boost inputs. If he failed, Shift had to purposely drown in the moat to reset the cycle and try again. After numerous attempts, Man, the amount of times that he had to probably go through this just to find this route, it must have been so fucking aggravating. Set, which seemed like the obvious option. Having to sync and, up something like that is such out, a tedious chore. It was also on cycle. Two down, three to go. But the order of the Austin. three kids on the beach would be less obvious. The nearby kid on the shore seemed like the next in the sequence, but as it turns out, skipping it and going directly to the kid after meets it on a cycle that floats by one of the beach pillars, in the perfect position for the bash. Going straight to the next beach pillar kid from here seemed to work out as well. Finally, returning to save the kid we skipped earlier, which is also conveniently floating right by Mrs. Puff, allows us to complete the sequence of five and immediately nice. collect the golden spatula. This seamless sequence also allowed collecting the sock on top of the muscle bar for the low price of zero seconds. It had been the most satisfying segment that Shift had pulled off up until that point, especially with the added difficulty of even initiating. I really do wonder how many hours so that took. So the first set of balloons, as we've mentioned before, requires a first try cruise boost to reach it in time for the cycle. But the added difficulty of hitting the cruise bubble and bubble bull on the same frame twice under that kind of pressure was just the surface of this strategy. The movement required to nail this trick was far more advanced than any other cruise boost segment up until this point, especially with the added struggle of hitting these moving targets, many of which needed to be bashed while falling off the pillars to even hit them. This led to many failures, and worse yet, the first kid had two different cycles it could take, Ooh, even seemingly at random. Yucky. The kid could either turn sharply into the pillar or continue on in a straight line. Both of these patterns required different timings and positionings for the cruise boosted bubble bash to pop the balloons. So, on top of having to succeed in the single attempt at the cruise boost, Shift also had to react to a 50-50 almost immediately after. And then, he had to complete the rest of the cycle with the most Maybe advanced cruise boost movement full? of its time. Er, the rest of the community the called him insane for even attempting this in his runs, but after Shift finished developing the strategy and timed it to save half a minute over completing the rolling ballroom, there was just no How is it not back. much faster than He'd the begin rolling ballroom? The I figured that'd be like two minutes saved. At the beginning of the run to make up for Fuck. removing the ballroom. Then add the balloon popping madness after cruise boosting was acquired, adhering to the routing balance of BFBB. It seemed by now the main focus of the 2016 community was ironing out cruise boost movement and pushing it to its limits. Now, world record attempts past Industrial Park had way more to offer than just crossing big gaps and running faster in straight lines. And the fans were loving it. On July 28th, Shift achieved three world records with the kids route. A better 103.36, a 103.24, which Shift apparently never highlighted because it was... So bad. Fuck, that was so, that was so bad. And a 103.19. What? Though he lost nearly half a minute to saving the kids in his 103.24, the other two world records had exemplary displays of this sick new strategy. At this point, the already existing community surrounding BFBB and Shift Stream was becoming more and more passionate about the run beyond simply indulging in nostalgia. Other members of the general speedrunning community noticed oh, Shift's daily attempts away. to lower the world record throughout the summer of 2016, oh, and he began to build a Krakatoa? significant following solely through speedrunning BFBB. Though many of these new viewers either hadn't grown up with BFBB or were skeptical of how good the game could possibly be, they'd grow to appreciate the new and exciting techniques constantly being developed. The game was now continually evolving, and an organized effort to optimize what many saw as a random cartoon game drew a lot of attention. It seemed the amount of effort going into this speedrun was something that anyone could come to appreciate. Well, yeah, Later obviously. that same month, it's both a fucking Jared hype and run. Shift started averaging well over 100 viewers streaming Let's attempts, go. an all-time high for Battle for Bikini Bottom on Twitch across both distinct eras of the community. Battle for Bikini Bottom was attracting mainstream speedrunning attention, and the numbers showed it. 
With the sponge moving fast being all the buzz, many were eager to weigh in on the topic. And with constant incoming criticism, pridefulness would develop among our community Thanks leaders. Reset, but with pride came a sense of commitment as they began to realize the potential their passion project truly had. Shift especially began preaching about earning the game the respect it deserved, pledging to regain Battle for Bikini Bottom's acclaim after years of it being pushed aside or forgotten by the world. This attitude was never before seen in this community surrounding the obscure title, and naturally stirred controversy now that all eyes were on them. Even within the community, things weren't all so great. Uh -oh. A witness to this era, the Perilous Civil Peanut War, recounts excessive memeing, attitude problems, and desire for community growth at the expense of its grassroots environment. A culture he couldn't take seriously, and found quite unpleasant. Of course, Jared and Shift found Peanut's attitude toward them unpleasant as well especially as he became more vocal on these disagreements, drawing some of his friends from other communities into the mix. Though these tensions started small, they would eventually evolve into a larger problem our community leaders would be forced to deal with oh God, far what happened? Road. Sacrifice But that's why we're covering this story in four parts. Mm -hmm. Between the controversy surrounding the players' personalities and skepticism of a SpongeBob speedrun, it seemed like most people in the speedrunning community at large had an opinion on the phenomenon. But opinions aside, Battle for Bikini Bottom was making waves. The community's leaders believed that to earn the game the acclaim they felt it deserved, they'd have to push the run to its absolute limits and cram in as many exciting and risky strategies as possible. And they were Each right. Each new world record, advanced strategy, or competitively driven runner on the leaderboard felt like a solid step in the right direction. They had a mission to accomplish, and junk. the grind had only just begun. In July of 2016, Kona had finally tied up his loose ends and finished learning to speedrun BFBB through Shift's tutorial video. He kept the game as one of his side focuses while preparing for his showcase of Ed and hey! Eddie's adventures in the mainstream. She's talking about Earth, that. Summer games done quick. During this showcase, he'd put on an outstanding display for over 100,000 viewers to see and gained quite a following from it. After GDQ, Kona decided to make Battle for Bikini Bottom his main focus. You know what's never been at a GDQ yeah, man, or any of them? Jelly. House of Once Caravan. Mr. Krabs overdoses on ketamine and dies. Well, until he, like, any he, game until of ever speed ran. <laughs> Still, I want to bump them. They're not ready for that. And they then can he'll handle that. Me right back. Kona's streams of BFBB averaged over 200 viewers throughout his grind for Sub 110, during which some of the summer's most iconic memories were made. Okay, let's go. It actually happened. Can this 110? <laughs> Oh no, dude. What I the fuck? Up bad. The success of Kona's stream rubbed off on Shifts and Jared's as well, as they both began averaging 150 to 180 viewers on their daily grinds. With three different options to watch the run, all catering to different preferences, BFBB continued to gain that hot traction. Kona and Shift eventually began applying for Twitch partnerships toward the end of the summer, for which they were declined each time despite averaging as many viewers as this they This is were. like the Attack on Titan plot. Partner. Yeah. See if it got... If I got accepted or declined, yeah, it looks like it's a decline. At this oh. time, partnership requirements were extremely vague, and it took a lot of persistence to attract the attention of the bigwigs. But with such a huge burst in growth Laser and motivation panic? to grind not going anywhere anytime soon, the community knew it was only a matter of time the before cap? they'd get their very own Twitch partner. Yeah, who's your daddy? The partnership program could help from? attract even more fans to rediscover the game like forgotten that show. and twice revived. With this conviction, the battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunners became Drawn dead together. set on making it happen. Having established himself as the fastest BFBB speedrunner by far, Shift knew he'd have to continue pushing his own limits to keep the game's progression interesting. The expectations were now higher than ever before during this era of non-stop world records. Fans piled in as they knew one could happen at any time. And just before dawn on July 31st, Shift achieved the first 102 only three days after his 103.19. With constant world record uploads, Shift's YouTube channel started to gain more traction. And by association, the rest of the BFV community together, continued to further swim. into mm -hmm. the limelight. Even the comment sections started to get their own regulars bruh you're insane these runs included gradual optimizations nearly every time anyone checking in could clearly see the work invested into these runs by shift and the rest of the community but these tiny optimizations were going to become far more important if 101 was ever going to happen the game's available time saves were far smaller at this point with the community's current understanding of the game mechanics 
Some routing changes. This docu series slash whatever is quite awesome. Scrolls. Well, it wow. is, and shift. the best part is it comes from the actual like madman himself, Shift. So it's an entire well, not just him, of course. It was the whole community effort, but it's really always cool to see like the number one player in the game be the one reporting on things as they happened and how things progressed. I always think that's the best part because you get like the top player perspective. Which would need to dig deep to push the current route further. He disappeared for a few days and returned with new motivation to push the time past. He's jerking himself off. Minute three. Well, who better to report on the history of the game than the person who's best at it? For example, let's say, hypothetically, House of Caravan was getting a speedrun documentary going to Netflix. I would, of course, have to be the one to talk about it, because I was the best. Right? You'd want that perspective. Who's more knowledgeable than the person that's the best at it? Now, as long as you don't check the, uh, the speedrun records for House of Caravan, it would make sense. Threshold. Amidst the grind for 101 and the hype surrounding Battle for Bikini Bottom, August introduced several new community members. They'd become friendly with some of the Thanks original resub. super acquaintances, Jalliops. and some others who'd been around during the old era rejoined as well. Red Moss, soon to complete his first run of BFBB, and Chris the Fast, soon to complete his second, both reemerged after crank. having been absent for years. In due time, Ringo Tongo and Red Moss would become better friends with Jared, Jelly, and Shift. The five would form a larger friend circle based around enjoying their new favorite pastime. Viewers could tune into any of their streams and find the others in the same call, grinding away at those cruise boosts. At this point, the community had become closer and more intertwined than ever before. And with so many streams occurring simultaneously, there was warrior. almost always a place to watch Battle for Bikini Bottom throughout An unbiased each day. view. With so many outlets to watch the Bro, game, it's not politics, it's speed running Battle for Bikini Bottom. Interest. The group made sure Why do you to need an unbiased view? It's just the fucking history of the, the speed run. <laughs> friends streams readily available for what do you mean? anyone tuning in. It was a tight network dedicated to improving their game while making memories along the way. By now, it was also clear that all of the top runners were more than happy to pick up the Xbox version of BFBB to further their improvement. And new runners felt encouraged to try the game with whichever version they already owned. After all, they could just upgrade to Xbox later in pursuit of more competitive times. This culture was forwarded to prospective runners by the five friends, and the mm. tutorial series they'd used to rebuild their game's player base. So finally a full tutorial series. Off the radar for us were plebeians. no longer terms that could be used to describe the Battle for Bikini Bottom community. As summer faded out, Please, Battle for Bikini sorry, Bottom's so presence continued warrior. spreading further. Even some bigger names on Twitch would take interest in Battle for Bikini Bottom during this time, streaming first-time playthroughs to get a taste of what all the hype was about. And of course, they took interest in the passionate community surrounding the game as well. At this point, speedrunning and Battle for Bikini Bottom had become inseparable. And with so many new faces rallying behind the community, they needed one main event to tie together the happenings Albarian. of that fateful summer. On August 11th, 2016, Shift improved the Any% percent world record again, this time by two seconds. A six second improvement happened the next day. Two days later, God, he just he keeps competing with himself. Someone give my man record, some competition. Shaving off nearly half a minute. Whoa! If you think that's crazy, just wait till you hear this. This run still had plenty of opportunities for improvement that just seemed to come out of, well, no place conspicuous. Without any major and with very few minor changes to the strategy set, Shift was saving huge chunks of time it's just from Mysterium. optimizing his own movement and adding more cruise boosts to the run. In the past, cruise boosting was only used sparingly in areas where the speed boost was needed to make spatulas viable for the run. But now, seeing as Battle for Bikini Bottom's route was far more optimized, saving a couple of seconds per cruise boost was actually significant if the player could hit them on the first attempt consistently. Around it seems like time, it's not super hard for cruise boost consistency. Actually a huge rectangular prism. Though invisible, it was the perfect surface for cruise boosting and marked the start of runners cruise boosting off of certain flat NPCs to avoid walking to the nearest wall. Shift began referencing Hazel's 2014 tasks in hopes of implementing some of the more difficult and obscure movement strategies into his runs, and began skipping the rotating shipwreck wall jumps Try it. with the Fuck use no, of cruise really boost hard. Fuff's 100% endeavors also led to more strat discoveries in the Any% percent run, such as the new route for Squidward's Dream that awards a sock for the low, low price 
of zero seconds. Those prices are fantastic. We're not going to do better than that. These creative uses of cruise boosting marked an era when GK. Battle for Bikini Bottom became a far more movement-centric speedrun versus just simply nailing setups for difficult tricks. This particular run was looking like a lost cause, but Shift ended up finishing with a time of 102.18 after coming back from a 24-second deficit, closing out a new world record by 3 seconds. With big comeback runs and the nearing of 101, the summer of 2016 was destined to go out with a bang. Runs paced for 101 would nearly reach 200 live viewers, mm. as they knew something big would happen soon. Nearly a week later, it. on August 25th, 2016, Shift was on his best pace ever. Half a minute ahead of the 102.18 out of Jellyfish 2, Not and bad. still within a minute of some of best leaving the graveyard. At this point, the fans were on the edges of their seats. And he doesn't choke. Shift entered Sandy's dream to perform He's not the built that sponge way. glide. Nearly an hour into the run, only this and the Robo Sponge stood between him and the coveted 101. Larry the Lobster being generous. Free. Oh man, what the fuck? What the fuck was that bullshit? And now the That's fans what I just wait. Said for Shift's response to said bullshit. Whatever, still a good run. Oh, good that mental. His reaction to such a heartbreaking loss was in stark contrast to those of similar misfortunes at the start of the summer. And he was even able to keep his head straight enough to close out a new world record with that same run. Don't get globaled yet, because we're going again. It was clear by now that Shift was improving at managing stress in front of live audiences, and with Why? That, get heated. his attempts became astronomically better. Later I should have heard a desk day, flip over. Shift tied the summer's resurgence of Battle for Bikini Bottom, the resilience of the community, and his own self-growth into one speed run. Oh, he's going turbo mode! Ah, he's dialed in! Man, all the tricks in this game are just so cool. One oh one fifty two, I'm calling it. Fuck. Drop the mic. The one oh one forty six became one of Shift's most. And then pick the mic up again and put it in your ass. Significant traction on YouTube and causing him to reach the one thousand subscriber mark on the platform. And over on Twitch, the movement was growing stronger than ever. With the game's popularity skyrocketing, the 2016 community knew they had what it took to avenge Cole and the other retired runners from the previous era. They began discussing the possibility of Battle for Bikini Bottom being accepted to games done quick. That the was game a big was rejected moment. unconditionally in the past when Cole and Hazel tried submitting to GDQ events, even dating back to 2013. Hazel even went as far to plan out her talking points for commentary had the game actually been accepted, staying hopeful each and every time. That's sad. It was something Aww. that meant the world to them, a chance to display their years of Aww. ingenuity on stage for thousands to enjoy. And now, the next generation of runners believed that they could make that dream a reality. Shift submitted Battle hey, for Bikini Prime, Bottom Roka. 8% to Awesome Games Done Quick 2017. The Winter Marathon was poised to be the largest ever, and BFBB had its best shot at finally getting in. Before the summer's revival of Battle for Bikini Bottom, Kona consulted GDQ committee member Vulagen regarding the possibility of BFBB's premiere in the marathon, who claimed there just wasn't enough evidence that SpongeBob and Speedrunning had what? enough crossover audience to make it work. What are you talking? I I've said this quite a few times. I'm not the biggest GDQ fan in recent years, but like, what are you talking about? There's not enough crossover in SpongeBob fans and Speedrunning? Why does that matter? Half the fucking games at GDQ don't even have fan bases. When I tuned in on the last one, they were speedrunning some fucking obscure SNES game where there's no glitches or anything. They just, like, go straight and shoot sometimes. What a weird reason. 
Well, just four months later, Battle for Bikini Bottom had taken the speedrunning community by storm. The evidence was laid out for everyone to see, and Shift just had to write a pitch to convince the committee to finally lay the six-time rejection curse to rest. And needless to say, Cole was watching silently from the shadows. Aww, Shift published his AGDQ 2017 Leave submission video for Ruder. BFBB Any% Percent on September 3rd, 2016. You may have already guessed by the splits, but just four days earlier, Shift broke the world record again with a 101.38. He just could not stop. Between the first and the second 101, Shift found a five second time save for collecting the spelunking spatula in Jellyfish Caves. Naming it Rock Skip because you, you jump on the rocks to get the Excess. spatula. Are, are these even rocks? Yeah. Okay. The new risky maneuver and advice. potential run ruiner would be showcased in the 101.38 and again in the 101.14 achieved on September 9th, 2016. Then, on the attempt immediately following the 101.14, Shift finished with a time of 101.04. Oh. Small movement improvements and increased hours of grinding had pushed the current route further than anyone believed possible, with very few major changes allowing the next minute mark to nearly be cleared. Following this PB, however, Shift finally hit an improvement wall. Oh no! But exactly two weeks later, Shift would complete a run that would shock everyone. Even God. Jesus Christ. One flat 32. In the aftermath of this run, eyewitness accounts state that Shift uttered something that few could comprehend, but that sounded something like this. I've got 32. Woo! To this day, this is regarded as one of the most optimized world records in the game's history, and it marked the end of an era in the any percent world record progression. Shift had completed a run with so few mistakes, it would go on to initiate the first world record drought caused solely by optimization of the Well, run, to be fair, it's only been Shift races. Races. getting world Despite records for, for the last two hours months each there. Day, this time would stand untouched for a while in comparison to the veritable grab bag of summer records. Chat and community reactions to this run were in stark contrast to those of the first 101. Ringo cites that there was a level of fuego. sadness watching this run finish off, realizing that the game's progression might have actually reached a dead end. And things certainly did start to slow down for the next month. For their knowledge at the time, the run had been shredded down to its core, revealing what everyone believed would be the final, crowning achievement in Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunning. The 59. Yes, for sub one of hour. Past, present, and future. Taking yes, the off the that's run what I'm fucking talking about. The grail for communities optimizing games clocking in at just above the 60 minute mark. And with the world record now wedged right between the hour and the 101 oh. marks, debates sprang up over whether or not it Holy was grail. possible. Oh. To give you some perspective, Hazel's and Old School's unfinished tool assisted speedrun from 2015 was only attempting to cut the hour mark. But Shift believed that there was still room to push the game further. Shift is better than he a felt computer. An intense grind He's could more than a machine. make the Sub One dream a reality. He's a boy. He and the rest of the Nay, community acknowledged that any time saves coming solely from better movement would be extremely gradual at this point. The game would need new strategies added with the sole intention of barely achieving a 59, thereby finishing off the progression of Battle for Bikini Bottom any percent. If these wicked strats happened to work in just one run, while everything else was near perfect, it would be just enough for Shift to become the first so basically it's free in under one hour. And in support of Easiest run of his life. the community rallied close behind. With their own resilience having thrust their beloved title into the limelight 13 years after its initial release, they knew that anything was possible. Yeah. Oh, but is this, a, is this a diss track? Grinding Bob. Losing runs. I guess I had to lose those runs to get to this one. Now some of you... Hey, wait, did, is Ringo the one to break place. the hour mark? From out of nowhere? trying to get out. Just remember. You could be doing this shit. Shift had foreseen the hard stop for the game's progress in the one hour range and had already been working on a plan to achieve the 59. He referred to it as plan, er, 
Route Z, <laughs> which truly encompassed the meaning of whatever it takes for the time it was implemented to That's achieve. That's so cute. Earlier that month, shifted Route Z into Cole's video archives the once soul again of many in search men. of more forgotten strategies. He rediscovered the older method for skipping jellyfish Everyone field zone tried one, died. which lured a hammer to jump off of and activate the checkpoint at the end of the level rather than using jellyfish rock skip. This method wouldn't There's save time enough on its own due to the significant time lost from needing a replacement for the sock on Jellyfish Rock. He'd need to make it even faster. On September 17th, Shift uploaded a video called Hammer Skip, which showcased a clean, modernized hammer AI manipulation where he also jumped oh, off the hammer's shit. head, but this time set up a damage boost. By inputting a frame oh, perfect oh, triple jump oh, out of the boost, oh. the cliff could be cleared without waiting for SpongeBob Damn. to respawn. As a quick refresher, a combo. the window to hit these types of jumps is only open for one sixtieth of a second after SpongeBob's damage animation ends. Ow. On top of that, there are five different animations to react to, each with different visual cues and muscle memory. Cole made use of these jumps in a couple spots when he ran the game, but the key difference with Hammer Skip was the risk factor. Missing the old school fountain jump or the Gulagoon tower jump to the sock landed the player on safe ground to try again. Each miss only cost a few seconds. With hammer skip, however, there was the added it's all potential or nothing. of drowning and having to reset. You the either whole make it run. first try or you go to jail. Was Fucking thrown in the slammer. There was a checkpoint backup, but relying on it saved such minimal time that in most cases it was worth the reset anyway. Factoring in the sock reroute, the trick only saved 8 seconds. Oh, what? With the level of risk and execution required on top of the degree knocks. of optimization the game was already reaching, the addition of this strategy would make it far more difficult to get runs going. But Shift's Route next Z doesn't fuck around would truly test his limits. So, if you recall from part 1, the Rock Bottom <clears> Museum <throat> was re-added to the Any% percent route during the community's grind for Sub-120, which was one of the many spatulas swapped in place of others throughout the run. This was due to a new exploit Hazel found during the summer of 2013, which allowed her to pass through the laser walls without deactivating them. By grabbing the moving tire lamps, she clipped right past the lasers without having to go through the Maybe museum's one, tedious Knox. puzzles. And because of Sandy's gliding ability, this character was definitely the one for the job. But three years later, with cruise boosting having been discovered and its movement mechanics being pushed further than ever before, it was time for a different approach. This time, Schiff would prove it's possible to save time clearing the museum as Spongebob. Ooh. On September 20th, 2016, the Schiff Bob? uploaded this segment and an Doodle improvement Meister? upon it later that same day that showcased the most advanced cruise boost movement of its time. By landing a precise bubble bounce on the rotating turret nodes, it's possible to climb to the third level of the museum, jump a huge gap, and grab one of the moving tire lamps to clip through the wall. Unlike the Sandy method, which allowed for gliding across the gap at a nearly set altitude, gravity was in full effect. To make the stakes even higher, any mistake between loading into the level yeah, this would be game over. the laser wall you fuck this up, it's a over. level reload, and most of the time, a run reset. This is because missing a cruise That's boost, a grabbing a death. ledge, or even stepping out of place can cost enough time for Spongebob to miss the tire cycle. Even the window to ledge grab was tighter, as the ledge get up animation automatically Stakes triggers never upon grabbing, higher. and Sandy's get up animation is twice as long as Spongebob. This is why they consider Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunners to be like firefighters. Be in the ledge get up animation this is so fucking dangerous, some of these them. strats. In other words, Spongebob's window to correctly grab the ledge for clipping is half the size of Sandy's. This, along with the added difficulty of falling onto the moving ledge rather than hovering Oof. into it, made this first section of the new museum strategy the most fearsome segment in the hey, entire They don't call it Route Z, route, uh, route Z for nothing. It had to be timed perfectly. And after clipping, Shift still had React to go to through X the reacting to you. <laughs> part yeah. of the Having lost his cruise boost from taking we'll laser damage, he now had to reach the balcony to activate another one. By spacing a precise jump across the tires on the other side of the wall, it's possible to skip the ledge grab by barely skimming the surface of them. This was important to execute properly, as grabbing a ledge could cost a second and a half, and outright failing would checkpoint shift on the bottom level of the museum, forcing him to restart the level. After making it to the balcony, Shift then had to nail the cruise boost used for making it to the next tire, which he would use to clip through the second laser wall. 
This tire was actually the same one God damn, used to clear the this level looks sandy, nuts. but this time, rather than just being able to slowly glide to it, SpongeBob has to remove his cruise boost, drop below the tire, turn 180 degrees, and grab the ledge to secure Ooh. the clip through the wall. What? Without a cruise boost active, SpongeBob what the remains his fuck, standard man. Speed, Holy which allows shit. him to make that 180 degree turn to grab the ledge. After doing so, Shift can grab the collectibles on the other side of the second laser wall and finish the segment. Throughout 2016's evolution of cruise boosting segments, this was the crowning jewel. These jumps, leaps, and maneuvers allowed SpongeBob to meet the same cycle as Sandy if done perfectly. Because the strategy made the same tire cycle that Sandy It probably only saves, I think, like eight seconds, saved, right? came from not having to switch to Sandy at the bus stop outside of the museum. Balloon kids were pretty scary, but this was just absurd. The full strategy was quickly named SpongeBob Museum and saved merely five seconds. D not even eight! Run for not even eight! Effort. The additions of SpongeBob Museum and Hammer Skip as part of Route Z solidified the one flat 32 as the end of any percent's unoptimized era, and it marked the beginning of the run's degeneration into a showcase of desperate maneuvers for barely any time save relative to what they'd expected before. What a now, mad world man. record improvements weren't expected to be greater than mere seconds and not nearly as frequent. Shift hoped to eventually achieve a low one hour time with Route Z, acknowledging the many stressful weeks and months ahead on the road to the ultimate prize. During this time when Battle for Bikini Bottom's world record had finally Anything found stability, for that sub hour the though, circle of friends it. began organizing community Gamers events. deserve Bill it. Kona had announced his retirement from BFBB back in August, and Jared had since gone on hiatus from streaming. The community Thanks still had emo. one of their three large channels to broadcast their next group endeavor. The revival <laughs> of speedrun races. Having been a huge motivator for completing runs during the old era, the 2016 community rediscovered the fun in racing and decided to turn it up a notch. Instead of organizing group races for leisure like Colin Hazel had done on SRL, the new community went with Does a SRL still exist? tournament format on I haven't heard anyone challenge. talk about that in a long time. This seemed like a fitting adjustment for the community's own heightening competitive spirit in its second revival. Now the runners' gameplay feeds were restreamed to Shift's channel while friends outside the races commentated together. Could he PV? Yeah, he probably could. It's looking pretty, uh, it's pretty oh, one-sided right it. now. Oh my Jared. god. Oh. Like a frame away from death there. Jesus Christ. That was like... I think that both of them can PB. And these streams were quite successful, often peaking at over 300 viewers and creating many Good memorable shit. moments. He's, he's ahead by he so much. He time here. He goes for it, he's insane. He's actually crazy oh, if he goes God. for it. He's a clinical oh, madman! Oh, we'll lock him up! A psychopath! And of course, it introduced Shift's viewers to some of the other community members that they weren't aware of, while giving newer members a chance to get involved. Oh, I gotta rip some ass. Battle for Bikini Bottom's close-knit group of friends was evolving into an expansive community. Thanks, Reese of Oh my god. No fucking way! You had a really great run. Yeah. I mean, I, I I was not focused. You should host speedrun tourneys. I've actually wanted to for a while. I think it'd be really fun. Dude, you had like four, almost 500 people at one point. Almost 500 people watching you. <laughs> yeah, I played, I played. First one to get a record gets a big prize. I love that shit. He's a god. He's a great friend. Make your own GDQ. With a community of runners grinding for okay. improvement. Before people misunderstand, I think GDQ as like a concept, I, I really like what GDQ does. I think they do great work. But over the years, I think the way they go about their GDQ, especially with the selection process, as well as who's allowed to even run in the first place, I think is unnecessarily strict and takes a lot of like the organic fun out of the event that it used to have. So I don't want anyone to think like I hate GDQ and I hate what they do because I really do like GDQ and everything about it conceptually as well as the runners that always do great work and the or like the actual organization of the event. But they make it such a corporate process on trying to be like squeaky clean, super family friendly, anything that's maybe in a gray area of PG-13 is usually pretty bad. They outright will ban runners for things that I think are rather trivial. So I just, on the whole don't really appreciate the very corporatized direction that it's taken over the years. That's that's all I'm saying. So I don't want anyone to like misconstrue where I stand on GDQ. Expectably optimized world record and viewership still on the rise 
many were hoping that Battle for Bikini Bottom would finally be the big time. Barracuda and Emmy. On October 5th, 2016, the community gathered in the Battle for Bikini Bottom Discord server to repeatedly refresh the Games Done Quick submissions page. After midnight, the list of accepted games for HDQ 2017 would finally become available. Having witnessed many years of Cole's submissions being rejected, Shelly especially hoped that BFBB's recent explosion in popularity would finally cause a miracle to That's happen. actually a pretty cool and idea, Jerry Bears. At midnight I just saw on that. October 6th, That's a cute anxiety idea. would erupt into excitement. Battle for Bikini Bottom 8% was accepted to HDQ 2017. This would be the first time BFBB, or any SpongeBob game for that matter, would be played at a Games Done Quick event. And though their reactions have unfortunately been lost to time, legend has it that tears of joy were shed on this day. After years of rejection, BFBB was finally free. One step closer to the dream, Shift would now select the commentary couch for the upcoming show. Oh, it's gotta be Hazel, it's gotta be Cole. One of their old favorites had not been left behind. At this point, Cole and Hazel had emerged from the yep. shadows after hearing that their yep. passion project had been accepted to the marathon. So Shift's absolute KT priority would be great, yeah. was to have them both by his side while showing the world how far their game had come. But unfortunately, due to travel complications, Hazel was unable to attend the what? event. What the fuck? Therefore, the final couch for the Battle for Bikini Bottom Any% percent Showcase would be Jelly, Red Moss, and Cole himself. A union of runners across generations together for a last hurrah. Through hosting race marathons on Shift's channel, the community was able to raise just enough money to crowdfund Cole's trip to Awesome Games Done Quick. Oh, that's so sweet. That's another thing. Why doesn't AGDQ just pay for the runners to attend? Upcoming, they make so Shift's much money. To they could absolutely Route cover travel. G59 was now stronger than ever. His mind was now set on beating the game in under one hour before the Grand Showcase in January. Later that same month, another huge step forward was made for the Battle for Bikini Bottom community and Shift's Shift Bros. stream. On October 17th, Shift's persistence with applications had finally paid off. Shift, come on down. You're now a partnered streamer. How does it feel, buddy? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Shift became partnered on Twitch through streaming speedruns, strat hunting, and community so events sweet. of exclusively it's all going right, baby. Battle for Bikini Bottom. Before 2016, this was an unthinkable feat. But in the new era, it seemed like Things the sky was the limit. Making its first appearance in April and now already partnered in October, Shift's stream became It's hard to believe that it hasn't even been a year. Bottom's popularity We're still in 27 or 16. 2016. With the game having grown such a strong and passionate community 13 years after its release, who knew how much more was in store for it? With a partnered Twitch channel and a network of friends dedicated to streaming the game, Battle for Bikini Bottom's future was looking brighter than ever before. Ten days after the partnership announcement, Shift set a world record in BFBB Any% percent with the newly added strategies. This run also showcased an exemplary Spongebob museum and overall time save that proved Sub 1 could happen within the coming months. But it was clear with the execution and consistency required to save that time that it wouldn't be easy. At this point, Battle for nah, the most easy for shift. strategies Fucking had free. shifted from setup-based, elaborate he gets a world record when into fast-paced, movement-intensive sections. The museum's execution being so tight to save those five juicy seconds made holding paces far more difficult, and the stakes were way higher after getting a run past this dreaded zone. And after passing the museum, shift still wasn't in the clear. He still had to pass Balloon Kids, Rock Skip, Texas Glide, Graveyard, and Robo Spanish Texas Glide has been that like past. silent run killer. All of that, combined with the added pressure of achieving the first 59, made stress levels higher than ever. And that was especially clear to the viewers. Oh, thank the fucking... It took almost an entire month of grinding to improve this record as well. On so November 21st, 2016, hey, Shift you. completed an any percent run in 1 hour and 12 seconds, a 3 second personal best, and also a run that no longer has video evidence. Man, what the fuck? Why does that this keep one flat 12 was never actually a world record. Earlier that same day, Shift achieved another 1 flat 12 that he never highlighted, despite it being 1 tenth of a second faster than the one you're seeing now. You know what? I'm gonna upload this one. The other one was just like, Jesus. this is just a better run, you know? I played better, 
I played riskier. It may not be the actual world record, but um, I'm just gonna upload it. This one flat 12 is the one that's still watchable today. Okay, I'm, I've been holding it in PP for a little bit now. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Also gonna fill up this water, be right back. I'm back. Thanks, Reese, stinky boy. The second one flat 12 lost 20 seconds to Robo Patrick's phase 3 spins. At this point in time, the strategy for phase 3 spin manipulations was still inconsistent. And due to the run's new level of optimization, the quality of spins in Industrial Park phase 3 became critical for holding 59 pace. It seemed the game had gotten so much tighter that parts of the run previously <clears throat> not feared were becoming potential run ruiners due to less room for error. But even so, a 1 flat 12 with 20 corrosive. seconds loss to Robo Patrick made it seem like 59 was just around the corner. It's and inevitable. The surrounding battle for Bikini Bottom continued to grow stronger. Not long after the 1 flat 12 was achieved, the previous world record skyrocketed in popularity on YouTube, breaking 100,000 views go. in just a matter of days during the Thanksgiving holiday. Of course, many of these new eyes were curious to experience live runs of Battle for Bikini Bottom and headed on over to Twitch to watch Shifts grind for the 59. Among this huge influx of newcomers, a good portion hadn't even seen or played BFBB before, yet were enticed by its unique gameplay that they were now witnessing. To this new, passionate crowd, this was a good potato. how the game was meant to be played. Battle for Bikini Bottom had transcended the, only way to the play constraints it. of nostalgic reminiscence. If you're not cruise boosting, turn the fucking game off. The gameplay and features its own community had molded upon it. It had become something greater. With unprecedented community growth complementing a Thanks newly updated in percent tutorial, the final months of 2016 brought Battle for Bikini Bottom its greatest rush of new runners yet. As more rallied behind Jesus the, journey, Christ. the grind for 59 continued with full vigor. Viewership rising, pressure rising, tension at its most palpable. And it may have started getting to Shift's head. Oh no. On December 9th, he what finished happened? in one hour and four seconds. Unlike runs he was getting a month prior Thanks where one or Timothy. two major mistakes struck the final blow, this run appeared to have a lot of mistakes. Shift's movement was improving, and some minor optimizations were added to enhance the run's potential, but it seemed like he was hitting a mental wall at the one hour mark. 59 was no longer a matter of being barely achieved with a near perfect run, as assumed months prior. It was now looking extremely doable, and Shift's greatest adversary was himself. <laughs> well, that, and the floating wheel in the sky. That's what I'm saying, that fucking nut glide is tough. We've seen so many runs die there. For all of 2016, this was the ultimate point of contention for all BFBB speedrunners. This chick ruined my fucking life. Yeah, I had sex with some girls after I told them I knew how to Texas go. Sponge Glide. It was pretty. Meaningless sex. Texas Sponge Glide had been found during the explosion oh, of new right strategies then. following Cruise Boosting's discovery in 2014. Hey, and nearly power, three man. years later, it was still an enigma. The runners just could not figure out what caused the glide to stick or send Spongebob skydiving feet first. The added pressure of having to perform after finally landing the Texas glide caused many graveyard chokes as well, as seen in the record of 1 flat 04. But on December 22nd, Shift cocoa. finally got a run out of the Dutchman's graveyard. Entering Robo Spongebob slightly behind, a lucky robot spawn was needed to make an early damage boost for skipping the final gauntlet inside of Robo Spongebob. At a 50% spawn rate, the alternative damage boost saves 2 seconds over the standard explosion boost method. The potential for a new world record was at the mercy of a you. coin toss. And by now, Shift had implemented a personal best playback camera to compare his current best times to his live attempts. Just that's, look yeah, at how cool close idea. the end of this run truly was. Oh, Shift PB'd by 1 second. 59 barely out of reach once again. At this point, Shift was getting some paces with potential to improve his time by over half a minute. A big PB was overdue, and 59 could happen on a bit any run. But still, one hour and three seconds would become the final BFBB any percent world record achieved in that year. 
Battle for Bikini Bottoms 2016 began with hopeful He needs a real challenger America and finished with an expansive a serious community gamer. having experienced several more than 9 minutes of world record Oh actually Red Moss is set right showcase there case and games done quick a partnered stream on Twitch prospects of a sub hour run and most importantly a close group of friends whose shared love for the Thanks game would inspire runners for See generations to the come. Bitsnox. And although the historic year had finally reached a close, the era was yet to be concluded. One day after the new year, Shift realized that while practicing, he may have found a solution for the dreaded Texas sponge glide. I think I discovered the trick to making this consistent. You see how the wheel moves up and down and you run out to here? That's the same every time. So depending on who you are, and this is the reason why like you have like phases when you get it or phases when you don't get it, is because as you get faster at the game, you're you're approaching the wheel at a different time. Sandy's dream, I got a 52. I Thanks think you it's highly spot. likely to miss this on a 51. Great, and then you get a 52, Reed. it's because you missed a cruise boost or you're standing next to the bus stop for too long. Like remember in my PB, I stood next to the bus stop for like a half a second before I jumped. I think it, if you slam into the wheel as it's moving up, you get it every time. Therefore, the new strategy was to jump toward the wheel the moment it started falling. That way, once SpongeBob reaches the wheel and slams, it's perfectly timed to push up and against the slam. Good and observation! The theory gave evidence to its credit. Shift started doing runs with this new strategy and nailed the Texas Sponge Glide each and every time. After losing countless 59s to this late game monstrosity, it appeared to have finally been solved. We finally got the Not raid boss down. Another arcane, field based gatekeeper from the Cole era had been slain. Without this major roadblock or fears of losing runs in Texas past the 50 minute mark, Shift was now fully confident in his ability to beat the game in under one hour. Oh, he has a free one hour now. Two days later, sub hour? Shift started his usual stream completely silent. Like sub 10 minutes. Usually being so talkative, it came as a surprise to the hundreds who gathered daily in hopes of witnessing the fabled 59. But Shift had apparently lost his voice from illness and told everyone not to expect the run to define an era on this day. And surely enough, he was right. They'd get both of them. Uh oh. There's a bit. Ouch, and reach some ruin and get some spicy. Maybe tier one god cactus? He's going full Route Z. Nothing's being held back. It's raw! Easy rock skip too? <laughs> we might be looking at a 57. Free Texas glide. And wins the 50-50. Oh. You wanna see me do it again? What a fucking machine. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> okay, so this is actually crazy. I did not see this coming. I think the only real mistake in the run was hammer skip. So I think this time is gonna sit for. A he sounds long. dead. Well, how would you sound after you just saved Bikini Bottom? On January 4th, 2017, the Battle for Bikini Bottom community slept soundly, knowing their game had finally been beaten in under one hour. At 59, before the long awaited showcase and games done quick, just as envisioned. 
but later that same day, they'd wake up to an exemplary run of Route Z, a sub-5930. Shift plowed through six minutes of improvement that even Cole believed was impossible. At the start of the summer, Shift became the champion of the community's humble speedrun leaderboards. But after six months, 26 world records, and 4,000 attempts, Shift had championed <laughs> Battle for Bikini Bottom itself. His crusade to uplift the game through the art of speedrunning proved that every hour, minute, and second of it could be cherished, and that this unlikely cartoon game suddenly bestowed with so much affection still had so much more to give. The battle for Bikini Bottom had only just begun. Ten days after the 59s, it would be the community's time to shine. Oh, I, oh, I totally forgot. HDQ was scheduled for yeah, it hasn't even happened 14th, yet. 2017 at yeah, we were still like Eastern in the time. very beginning of 2017. Cole's trip was fully funded and the other couch members were good to go. Things were looking good until the morning of, the run was pushed one back series. half an hour earlier on the schedule, Hope you had a good stream and then the other half night. an hour earlier again. With the hour-long run now scheduled for 8 a.m., the community mm. feared that many waking up to Optimal see the time. at 9 a.m. would miss the whole thing. Jesus Christ. That the turnout for the community's most coveted moment would flop. But nonetheless, at 8 a.m., Shift stepped up to the plate, Cole, Red Moss, and Jelly by his side. No matter the, the outcome, gang. this would be historic. Cole and Shift, the face look at of the short game hair and Shift, respective eras, alongside two runners who would win. Bro, look at that volume! Damn it! Son of a bitch! Okay. Shit! Fuck! Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, wait. A little more. Oh my god! Wait. Okay, I give up. We'll play from here. Moss and Jelly by his side. No matter the outcome, this would be historic. That hair, man. So much fucking volume. It's like an extra six inches off his head. Fucking jealous, man. That's crazy. Yeah, maybe it's not even hair. Maybe his brain's just that big. And it's just like hidden in here in this dense forest. Cole and Shift, the faces of the game during their respective eras, alongside two runners who had witnessed both revivals of the community, would demonstrate how they'd elevated Battle for Bikini Bottom beyond what anyone believed possible. Also, you didn't. Oh, it's period and comma. That's right. Hear me say that correctly. The next game is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Every now and then, a game. It may be Coco inexplicably takes over the speedrun community and Spongebob Squarepants is one of those games God damn right suddenly found itself an entire community of players and they've really pushed their game so look forward to that coming up in just a moment a lot of enthusiasm there I like it that was good yeah okay. alright here we are this is the day we play Spongebob for the first time ever in GDQ. I'm Shift on the couch. You guys can introduce yourselves. Okay, I'm Cole. Cole. I'm, Moss. I'm Jelly. All right, and we're going to start the run. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yes, this is a licensed video game. God, I hope he world but records at GDQ. You guys are going to be entertained, trust me. He's going for Rooty! At first try. Nice. Here we go. That was really good. And everyone has their own little setup for this trick too. According to all known laws of aviation, the sponge should not be able to fly. And we got a first try. The full-blown Root Z at GDQ. This whole process of waiting for him to slam. Thanks, guys. It took a lot of practice for that one. We're coming up to Hey Kid. Hey Kid. There it is. <laughs> and we're coming up. And time. Hey, a 102 at the big stage? 90,000. Okay. Watched live as Shift disabled the hand on the jellyfish taxi pad, curious to see what this SpongeBob game from 2003 had to offer. And by the time Shift hit the final fuse, that number had doubled. 180,000 <laughs> watched live as Shift performed the game's most iconic tricks, 
even nailing Hammer Skip and SpongeBob Museum for all to see. Big day for the SpongeBob speedrunning community. It took us years to get this game in, right, Cole? Yeah, like yeah. four or five years. Yeah, we had to. That's why we had to get Cole out here. We all raised money to bring him out. Cole was the original runner of this game. Gave us the baseline for what this game is today. We probably How wouldn't even cute. Of us be here without him right now. So I'd like to give a shout out, personal shout out to Cole right here on the couch. Everybody give a round of applause for Cole. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to Hazel. She's a really talented tasser and she actually was the original router for this game. I'd also like to give shout outs to Hazel Jared's Prime. Giants Hi. and Ringo Tongo. They're both very talented runners and they care about the game a lot. They really wanted to come here. So I'd just like to shout them out. You guys were not forgotten. Shout out to just the entire community for making this possible, supporting everybody and Getting SpongeBob in a GDQ. Who would have how thought, whole, like, oh, Jesus? How really incredibly by wholesome! By you guys too for supporting. The run hey, thank you, Tier One Jerry. Success. The Fuck shift yeah, was man. offered a personal interview and opportunity to answer tweets from viewers live immediately afterward. And there were plenty of questions to be asked, seeing as the GDQ Twitter feed had been posting nothing but SpongeBob over the past hour. Battle for Bikini Bottom had become a sensation. I imagine it was their the most viewed single game the during that GDQ. Jason Horner, the lead software developer of Battle for Bikini Bottom during his time working at Heavy Iron Studios back in 2003. Jason reached out to Shift, congratulating him on his run and expressing his happiness for his own passion project living on in the hands of its own community. And then Jason starts speed running. To confirm many of the <laughs> Only one to give the Shift a run. The workings of Battle for Bikini Bottom. Even Can they have their own developed. battle? Not surprisingly, Jason was the one responsible for the game's smooth, unique physics engine that they'd all come to love. And it was no easy task getting it to that point. In an effort to polish and perfect what he refers to as his favorite game he worked on throughout his career, Jason went above and beyond Heavy Iron's Call of Duty and took it upon himself to maintain 65-hour work weeks developing Battle for Bikini Bottom. Jason's extra hours served to combat the game's low budget and rush development, and evidently, those hours paid off. It seems determination and resilience run deep in the bloodline of this unsuspecting video game that thrived against all odds. That and guy is just year, a gamer. Even Heavy Iron itself acknowledged an article written about Shift and the rest of the community surrounding their magnum opus. But following the overwhelming success of the showcase and Games Done Quick, these wouldn't be the only developers gaining interest in Battle for Bikini Bottom. After six years of build-up, Battle for Bikini Bottom had reached heights surpassing anything its original runners could have ever dreamed of. By the end of 2015, it was looking like it could only ever exist in a dream. But having built a strong foundation subs, of fascinating Thank gameplay, you, we now know Appreciate it was generosity. only a matter of time before fresh motivation was enticed to relight the original community's torch. In the end, all it took to reshape their game's future was sheer determination and true friendship. And an inhuman gaming specimen their own foundation known as Shift. For a passionate community that would thrive <clears throat> for years to come. Along the way, they'd overcome many challenges and demotivators inhibiting the community from reaching its potential. All while gracefully transitioning Battle for Bikini Bottom into the new and competitive era of speedrunning. And, needless to say, Is this say, your first time hearing about Shift? Too, Not at all. Gameplay, like I said, sicker. I knew about him. What felt like the natural, satisfying conclusion to our story GDQ. was just the mid-season finale. The remainder of the decade would truly test the limits of Battle for Bikini Bottom's so potential, bliss. as well as the strength of its own community. With their gazes aimed high, they entrusted Shift to lead the way. But how much further could Battle for Bikini Bottom be pushed past the sub-hour mark? Significantly further. How would further. Shift adapt to such a dramatic increase in influence and responsibility? Were the community's foundations strong enough to withstand the masses of incoming exposure? All of these questions and more will be answered, but in due time. Our stories of camaraderie <laughs> and personal growth will be covered in two parts to complete our saga. Yeah, but in this the is meantime, still only we half. sincerely wish you the best experience with Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated. When we return, we'll dive right into everything leading up to the announcement As you said, made shady. waves around the world. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm SM Loader. See you all so good. in the new era. So fucking good. Subscribe and ring that bell to know when parts three and four are available to watch. God, it's so <laughs> fucking good. Oh yeah, Shift also has like really long hair now. <laughs> hey, b socks The International Circle Jerk. Yeah, Super part three hasn't come out yet, right? B 
Oh my god. <laughs> 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 He's really some toxic son. Shift got world record on GDQ day last month. Really? Like at GDQ he got record? I didn't see that. That's kinda of fucking nutty. Thanks to some JoJo. And of course, Jared, I reached out to Shift to ask if it was okay, because that's something I really wanted to watch. Some of you might be still trying to get that thing. Oh, not <laughs> at GDQ right after. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2024, he goes, Relax those last four albums, you're whack now. Now this new shit is the fact, the fact now. <laughs> Damn, he's got four kind of going in. Strategy L clipping. As you achieve. <laughs> As we said, Jetastic. As you achieve the trick by mashing the shit out of the L. Oh, is that true, Hydra? Yeah, sounds like GDQ. <laughs> As you achieve the trick by mashing the shit out of the L trigger. <laughs> yeah, it was Shift's channel. Where the fuck did the dog chugs go? But it was like a whole community effort. I'll kill your ass now. Hey, B sauce. Okay, wait, I can't. You calling it a night after this? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Why was Shift banned from GDQ? Lord only knows, man. People get banned there for no reason. Confidential sources tell me that there are 32 of a specific kind of Easter egg throughout this video. If you find them all, guess what you get? Not a goddamn thing. And if you're not in the know about what I'm laying down, well, why should I talk to you? Thanks for watching. If you've been oh, paying fuck. attention to that was so good. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Oh. No, part three's not out yet. Subscribe. I'm not logged in. That's why I'm not subbed. But yeah, I found shifts. I don't remember when. There was a clip that I saw of him where he was talking about how much he dedicated to this one game. It was a clip about how he turned down social, like, gatherings or, like, going out with friends in order to perfect his Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunning. And stream it. And I remember seeing that and I was like, holy shit, what a fucking grind. Like, it was an actual Sigma grind set. I wonder how many hours just streamed the Battle for Bikini Bottom he has. Let me see. I'm gonna look it up real quick. What streamer charts tell me? Let's see. He's not banned. He ran it at the last GDQ in January. Oh, okay, good. Well, that's good news then. Let's see. Is there a better site to use than streamer charts? Highly recommend watching the 43. Plan on it, just not tonight. Cause I can't find it on, like a full one on streamer charts here. Or maybe I'm just not looking in the right spot. I can tell you for the last 30 days, he has streamed nine, er, no way this is right. In the last 30 days, he streamed 397, 397 hours of Battle for Bikini Bottom in the last 30 days.